a Jack Daniel swilling pizza eating dog hating whore using cocaine abusing hairy back big belly blowhard from New Jersey the fat little bastard known as Artie Lang let me know where I'm uh, hi this is Babe Ruth uh, the only real game in the world baseball uh, and I'm glad to have had the opportunity to play with some of the finest players in the world Murderers Row <laughs> the Bronx Bombers to my left the first Jew player Hank Greenberg uh, one night we got drunk and looked for his horns apparently that's bullshit some of the players feel it he cut the horns off in Virginia on the train. None of us saw it. But we do. We did check for the Jews' horns. Hank Greenberg. Dan, you find the bad stuff? No. How come you're looking down? I'm just making sure that we're all recording. How come you're looking down? And I'm hoping I have the right speech. <laughs> what speech? Babe Ruth's last farewell to baseball. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm going off on a tangent. Okay, good. <laughs> you thought that was part of it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you afraid you're going to not work after this? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> that, that's the least of my worries. Right. Well, you're laughing now. What's funny now? Huh? What's funny now that you weren't laughing before you're laughing now? Well, I was worried that I had the wrong speech. I'm like, oh, shit. Did what, I get the wrong speech? Well, what can I possibly say? <laughs> the, the murderer's row thing. But I don't... what was I looking at, though? <laughs> I don't have a. You didn't bring right. it out. No, but you have it in your memory, and your well, your, no, your memory is pretty good. Yeah, I know. I think I was doing. I was mixing up Lou Gehrig. Oh, as we know from uh, Mexican Lou Gehrig and uh, Miller's Crossing. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I watched it right after you said it, and then you, you you're what? pretty close. On you, you did the scene from Miller's Crossing oh, the last show. Well, they don't know that. <laughs> Just having a crazy conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I I, uh, I was doing the speech, and then. You know, I, I, can't, I can't stand talking to people these days. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. When people check their phone. I know I know everybody does it, I, but I just hate them. I want to strangle them. <laughs> I mean, I, people are always looking at that fucking phone, and you, you could be saying anything to them. You could be saying, yeah, that's it. It's in my bone marrow, uh, you know, and that's it. I need a transplant. There's like a, the rarest of cancers that I have. <laughs> and it's in my, I need a bone marrow transplant. They said there might be one African child that might have a match <laughs> in the Syria area. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't cost anything to actually extract the bone marrow. We would just kill the child. <laughs> it happens all the time for 25,000 cash. We do it all the time for Americans. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's estimated that 15 Africans have died so Keith Richards could keep playing Start Me Up all around the country. And um, uh, Dan, of course, helping me out here. <laughs> uh, why don't you shut your microphone off? I mean, it doesn't matter. You, you know, just, just don't make it. Just, I, I'd rather people think there's no one here so then it explains why you're not laughing. Uh, I'll just do all the work. Plug everything in and let me go. Uh, yeah, you know. So uh, you know, you telling that people have bone. You telling people have bone marrow cancer, and uh, they're checking their texts. And the text could be, you know, I mean, like if they ever, how great would it be? Here's my here's my dream. If they open up, if they fucking open up this terrorist phone, and all it is are texts like the most stupid <laughs> innocuous. Text like vapid, just like, did you get the milk? <laughs> did you get the milk? They have milk at the at the that's not a wawa. That the Seven Eleven. Don't tell me it's not a. Did you wash the burkas? How am I gonna go outside? I need clean burkas. The one smells like cucumber. My one burka smells like a rotten cucumber. Like a dead rabbit was burned in sulfur. Like a like burnt sulfur was shoved into a dead rabbit's asshole. That's what my burka smells like. Did you use the burka as a diaper again? You did what? That's a holy thing. 
I know where I have diapers. Go get more. <laughs> they pay a shit out of that place where we work. <laughs> I know they're throwing us a big party. <laughs> oh, Christ, how I'd like to blow that place up. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, this text is getting long. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> what, I would love for it just to be, hey, hey FBI, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the best ever. All it says when they open up the phone is Baba Booey. <laughs> they had the fake laugh. No, was just, <laughs> that wasn't a fake laugh. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's just no natural. There's no rhythm. There's no soul. <laughs> either it's dead silence. Either I tell a joke and, like, you know, look, I, I agree. I admit they're not all, you know, fucking the wittiest. They're not all winning a fucking Pulitzer. <laughs> Not all of them are getting quoted in Science Magazine like Stephen Wright. <laughs> you can't have everything where would you put it. I understand that. They're not all, you know, you can't have everything where would you put it. It's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it. They're not all that, you know? <laughs> a lot of them are cheap, hacky, Syrian accents. <laughs> but this is the angle I've decided to go with. The angle being if they open up the phone, it's, it's a not, you know. Okay, that's my premise. What the fuck? Quarter a day. For a quarter, that's what I figured out. So Dan over here, you know, first of all, he runs around. I've never seen a more nervous human being. <laughs> it, but, and then he relaxes when we're on the air and does nothing. <laughs> Have you always been like this? Yes. Or? No. Yeah. It really is very, I appreciate it, but it's very disconcerting. <laughs> uh, Dan Stier, like, I get very nervous around Dan because he <laughs> runs around like, okay, man. Uh, you know, the other thing you do, you know, right, realize when you book a guest, you want the guest to be good. So when the guest makes a point, you nod your head yes like a thousand times. You realize you do that? Uh, I think I do. Yeah, yeah. Like when Harry says something, what do you just go? <laughs> 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 you, you look like Machete trying to sneeze on fast forward. <laughs> your Isn't that like, bad, really? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get so nervous? I mean, you've been around celebrities, but producing major. I mean, Dan has produced. I mean, listen to uh, listen to that interview with uh, Robert um, uh, Bar Rob Barnett the other day, and you hear uh, this guy was the president of CBS, and you hear that Dan, Dan's got street cred, man. You hear Dan was in the trenches of radio and uh, dealt with everything. I mean, everything. He's been around celebrities, major stories that are. I mean, eighty percent are probably not true or embellished, but that's fine. We all do that. But if 20% are true, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you know, a certain player hanging a, a guy off a, off a bridge because he admitted that they might be cheating on their wives in front of wives. <laughs> the guy, I won't say any of the names, but the guy supposedly uh, brought up the fact that, you know, broads were around on the road <laughs> in front of this player who got a lot of pussy, I guess, and the wives were there. The guy's like, hey, you know, this happens all the time. I'm not in front of the wives. And the guy, this fucking idiot who wasn't a player, was an outsider, wouldn't stop yapping. And Dan knew it was coming. And this player, the big guy, you know, they went outside and Dan walked out there and uh, chilly night. And fuck me. My phone's ringing. Oh, it's my mother. Ma? Why, what's the matter? Yeah, no, we're doing the podcast late. Oh, still doing it? Huh? You still doing it? Well, no, we just started late because I wanted to rest my voice. I got to, you know. So, I mean, so you're still doing it? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're in the middle of it. All right. Did you go to the doctor? Yeah, I, everything's fine. You sure? Yeah. Hey, let me know. Okay, I'll talk to you later. The, the, he, he drained it for, with all the pus. The pus from where? He lanced the boil. I'm out. You're on the air, Ma. I try to improv. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's my mother. A lot of comedic instincts. Just like Dan. At least my mother laughs. How come it sounds better now? I don't know. That's the other thing. Dan trying to explain to me how the bass set makes the teeth oh, sound better. Oh. There's not even a comparison. You realize you're a, a bit of a sucker. <laughs> Dan, by the way, very wealthy person, Dan. <laughs> yeah. like, very, very wealthy. Yeah, sure. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Uh, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. 
I mean, I would have done better than my my parents. Everybody I know gets money from their parents. Me. <laughs> I don't get money from my yeah. parents. No, believe me, you're going to get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's coming. Where are they gonna, who are they going to give it to? <laughs> my parents don't have a lot of money. All right. I know you don't want to say it on the air. Man. It's, it's so smart. <laughs> I mean, no, you're, you're right. They don't have any money. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so, do you, you have a retirement plan or something? No. Well, what are you going to do? What are your plans when you get old? Oh, well, do I have retirement money? Sure. Yeah. I've, Where's that coming from? From what I've collected. <laughs> What's the most you made a year? <laughs> You're like Trump. <laughs> I've given a lot to veterans. Can we see a tax return? <laughs> I guarantee what's in Trump's. Trump is such a gutter snipe. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, first of all, Ted Cruz bringing up the fact that a, a guy built a, a, a guy built a thousand foot tower <laughs> in the middle of Manhattan, and he might have had to deal with the mafia. <laughs> What are people, boobs? <laughs> <laughs> he got con- he got concrete from A&S from Fat Tony Salerno. That's the tip of the iceberg, dude. Who do you think took the garbage away? <laughs> Illegal Polish guys? <laughs> <laughs> you know how much garbage is produced? <laughs> A thousand foot tower on Fifth Avenue? <laughs> <laughs> It's like Rodney Dangerfield in the in the back to school. And the guy goes, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you know who the, uh, the is in charge of that position, but it's not the boys. <laughs> Mister Mellon, mafia kickbacks. <laughs> Where will we build our building? How about Fantasyland? <laughs> Ted, Ted Cruz. That's that's a that's a, these guys are these neat New York values. Let's send him back with New York. Fuck you, dude. You're talking to New York here, jerk off. Yeah. What do you think you hire Ed's Ted Cruz's cleanup company? <laughs> Hello, I'm the I'm the father of Ted Cruz. I'm a man. I'm a very proud man. My fa- my my son is Marco Rubio. <laughs> I am a proud Cuban man. Sure, I am. I, the, he is the son of a terror. Can Rubio give us his fucking background a couple more times? <laughs> you know what the American dream is? The American dream is the son of a, son of a mail worker. <laughs> what, what is his father? A mailman, what was he? I think so. I well, don't remember. Son of a what? A bartender? Yeah. He keeps saying it. The second he starts talking, I of turn Of course, off. yeah. <laughs> son of a bartender. Wah. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Mr. Stand-Up Comic. All of a sudden, he's Richard Pryor now. <laughs> fucking retards laughing at him. And you know what they say about a guy with small hands? Wow, wow, that's so fucking shocking, <laughs> you millennial fags. <laughs> you don't know shit. Here's your safe place right in my cock. <laughs> These fucking ass wipes want a safe place. Brown University. You know what those fucking dick wipe kids said to the, the people that run Brown fucking University? They said, we're tired from protesting all, all <laughs> for the last two months. We want a fucking easier schedule. Oh, I wish I was the parent of one of those <laughs> shitheads. First of all, I would say, son, I'm sorry because I failed you. At some point, I started raising a complete and utter pussy. Paid off enough jerk-offs to get you into Brown, <laughs> the place where Kennedy's fucking kid went. <laughs> so he could fail the bar 14 <laughs> times. Another fucking idiot. Blockhead. Jeff Kidd Jr. looked like me. No one know who he is. <laughs> <coughs> Nobody. They wouldn't care where he rides his bike. <laughs> George Magazine would never have gotten off the air. <laughs> George Magazine. Fucking idiot. <laughs> I decided after failing the bar 52 times that I'm going to take flight <laughs> lessons and open a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the kids at Brown, they want a safe place. A safe place, okay. We're trying to prepare you for the world, <laughs> fucking fuckstein. <laughs> you, you want a safe place? Great. Okay, you have a safe place all the college. Now take the 7 train to Brooklyn to go to work. <laughs> okay? The first homeless guy that gets in your face, tell him you're, you're in your safe place. <laughs> and he's going to go, yeah, I, I live at the shelter. 
Give me your shoes. <laughs> Give me your shoes. <laughs> then you'll sue Brown for not preparing you for the homeless guy. <laughs> Dad, the seven train won't give me a safe place. <laughs> really? Uh, bye, son. I'm killing myself. <laughs> your mother's incessant whining about your little brother's graduation not being <laughs> safe enough. Apparently, your little brother heard somebody say black guy instead of African American and he's crying. Do you realize the afternoon I'm having? Your son, your little brother heard someone say black guy. <laughs> not African American. Black guy. And he's crying. He's crying in history class. <laughs> well, what happened to you? An African-American took my shoes. <laughs> Why? Because he lives at the shelter. Okay. When you repeat that story, make sure you say, don't say black guy. <laughs> what a flawed term, by the way. I refuse to say African-American. That's what happens when you go to, when you go to comedy clubs now, these little millennial shit wipes. <laughs> if you say black guy... <laughs> In a sense, if you say black guy, <laughs> they look at you like you're raping their cat. <laughs> they get scared. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> African-American doesn't even make any fucking sense. <laughs> Charlize Theron's an African-American. You could be white. It makes no fucking sense. Say black, say white. Everybody's cool with that. Nothing offensive at all. It is what it is. Safe place. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Look at Rubio's ears. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. I think she's Brian Regan. Oh, these poor black guys are standing in the back of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> oh, they're so uncool. I would fucking let Rubio's wife shit in my mouth. <laughs> oh, God. I would eat Rubio's wife shit with a knife and fork. <clears throat> Tie him up with his ears. <laughs> Prop open his fucking uh, son of a bartender eyes. <laughs> That's so tough. And make him watch his fucking drugged up wife <laughs> take a loose shit in my mouth. <laughs> That's how much I love her. I'll have a little Cuban sandwich there, honey. <laughs> That's what I want. Look at these two little jerk off kids. <laughs> Future assholes. Future kids who want a safe place. <laughs> that kid's on the, the kid from Brown's on the sixth train going. <laughs> he's on the NNR going across Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel Jackson without the acting ability comes up to him. <laughs> Yo, motherfucker. <laughs> Give me your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, it's me again. What happened? An African-American took my eyebrows. <laughs> I told him I was, I was in my safe place. <laughs> and he took my eyebrows. <laughs> With his teeth. <laughs> that he had to go get first. His teeth were at the shelter. He dragged me by my ponytail over <laughs> I saw. I, I work for a very, a very progressive law firm. <laughs> they don't mind. Uh, they don't mind ponytails. <laughs> but, but he just kept dragging me. <laughs> I told the cop I'm not in my safe place, and the cop said I'm eating. <laughs> I tried to film the cop with my iPhone six, say I'm eating, so I could we could sue him. But instead, I just got his feet. <laughs> Is that enough footage? I can't say that. I can't talk to you right now. Your your, your little brother's crying again. What happened? <laughs> uh, he heard a, a woman refer, referred to as a broad by an older janitor, and he started to cry. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. So you're not the only one having a shit day. <laughs> I think my back's infected. <laughs> There's no such thing. Don't you understand they're trying to prepare you guys? That's what their job is and as college professors is to prepare you for the world. And, you know, and guess what? You know, the, the, the ironic thing is you're taking away another guy's free speech. That's the most liberal attitude you could have. Everyone gets the yap. 
as repulsive as some people might sound. This is the shit I'm saying. I just said I want one of the contenders for president's <laughs> wife to sh- take a loose shit in my mouth. It's disgusting. It's not funny. It's not entertaining on any level. It's scatological in the worst of ways. It's not intellectual. It's got no hidden meaning. It's an angry fucking 48-year-old guy at the end of his life. Yeah, I'm waiting for some blood work. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, God. Marco Rubio. Trump. Trump is he's pushing 60. Trump's kids. Those two sons. I can't, When they're on, it's like, I can't stop watching. <laughs> Donald Trump's kids with those rehearsed answers. To the, the little brother, Eric, the, the, the kid, the, the blonder version of Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> this is the question they asked. Apparently, the Melania question is a bit of a awkward situation <laughs> like why isn't she there and you know that brought it's like what are we doing <laughs> i'm leaving i'm leaving a i'm leaving a a, a hot tub made of solid gold <laughs> with anderson cooper and his tennis player boyfriend i'm watching anderson cooper blow his tennis player boyfriend <laughs> in a tub made of gold while three illegal illegal immigrants are fanning me with the hair of ostriches and white tigers. <laughs> with the hair of a Sharpay we killed at eight. The hair of a badger. <laughs> and several women, I don't know where they're from, who aren't allowed to talk. So remember when you sold that woman's mouth shut? Yeah. <laughs> they're putting oils on me, rare oils. <laughs> and you want me to go to a caucus in Iowa? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Tell him I have to raise the kid. <laughs> Where is the kid? I don't know. That's the immigrant. <laughs> Do you realize if there was a wall, no one would be raising Donald Trump's kid? <laughs> <laughs> Could you let just three more? Uh, th- do we just need the so the furniture <laughs> polished? Let seven through the wall. Make sure they have good biceps. <laughs> oh my god! She's bored. He's sixty years old with that <laughs> orange hair. Traveling all around the fucking world now with Chris Christie to, to tell everybody we'd make America great again. <laughs> She's probably sucked so much immigrant cunt. <laughs> Just trying to fucking, of course, it's a legend. I'm just, you know, it's my fantasy land. <laughs> That's what happens you have a podcast. You have no one listens to I can say whatever I want. I mean, you might as well be saying, I mean, I might as well be saying this is to my living room. <laughs> I mean, I do. Ted Cruz looks like a minor bird. <laughs> uh oh. Shit. Hillary Clinton. They, well, what dorks we want to have room because that's why you know Barack Obama. I don't. Know, I guess he was a bad president. I don't know what the fuck's going on? Brian Williams is talking. What does that mean? <laughs> Brian Williams just said Trump won. Good news for Rubio. <laughs> safe place. So, what do these kids about the safe place want to do? What, what, what are they majoring in? Are these Black Lives Matter people. First of all, you know, a lot of them are, you know, <laughs> fugitives. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to blend in. All right, here's the plan. Listen, we're going to listen to go. We're just, we, we, uh, Black Lives Matter, that's us. All right? <laughs> Got a guy in Queens who has some acid. I'll get the, these bracelets off. <laughs> Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, apparently, according to Rolling Stone, uh, Tina Fey will make you laugh till it hurts. <laughs> Tina Fey's best movie. <laughs> That's the uh, billing. I always thought that was beer league, but <laughs> That's right. A pregnant Tina Fey doing us a solid. And her, uh, her big line in beer league when she gets dumbed down to me and Frank. Well, me and Frank's very smart. <laughs> and another dumb slut gets herpes. <laughs> That's what Tina Fey says. In my movie. <laughs> <laughs> the set of beer league, not a safe place. Who was raising these pussies? I mean, who raised them? David Schwimmer? 
Is that what we have? These are all the kids that grew up watching Friends. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a commercial on now with Jennifer Ryan. That makes me furious. <laughs> she walks around a plane bitching to the fucking stewardesses. There's no shower on her plane. Ugh, I know. What the fuck <laughs> is she talking about? Who relates to that? Then she's sitting at a, uh, an Art Deco bar that looks like it's the penthouse of something out of, like, you know, uh, anti mame Fucking bedazzled in gold. That's how she lives. So, you know, most of us are just fucking sitting next to a guy who looks like Fernando Valenzuela. <laughs> His hair in your fucking food because he fell asleep and went to the left. His fucking long hair. <laughs> Cause he, I guess he decided to fly over the wall. <laughs> the George Foreman and Vent Help commercial. I can't see that enough. <laughs> I say George. All my friends say George. What do I do with my new invention? They do? Do they really? <laughs> no, they don't. George Foreman, this is not discussed enough. It's not discussed enough. George Foreman has eight kids, I believe. I mean, that's an estimate. <laughs> They're all named George. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that. The chicks, well, no, okay. There's six gut kids, or six boys. There's George, one, two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> and then the chick is Georgina <laughs> and Georgetta. I'm not lying. He listens to them one day. He goes, yeah, George, <laughs> George one, George two, George three. Are you talking about the movie Jaws? No, George. <laughs> okay. Jaw one, mm-hmm. <laughs> jaw two, jaw three, jaw four, jaw five, jaw six, and then we got a girl, Georgina, <laughs> and then Georgina. <laughs> <laughs> and they all say, Hi, Daddy, how do I go to invent help? <laughs> Brian Williams is thinking of a lie right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Sitting next to this chick. I was on the, I was on the night show with this chick. She was the first guest that worked. She killed. How annoying. <laughs> What's her name, Dan? The chick with the, you were there. With, uh, oh, Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow. What's her deal? Every time I come back in, Dan, put, Dan puts MSNBC on. <laughs> She's a lesbian. That's her deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I bet you. Yeah, she's very pretty. I, mean, I guess they see the chick in it. And she, she can't be Sarah Butchie or something like that. She's very pretty. Very, very, you know, whatever, but. But, you know, these chicks, they all think they're funny. People tell her she's funny. Who yeah. tells her she's funny? You know? And I got to sit there, and the fucking segment producer, the Tonight Show, I got to go, all right, man, I know my place. <laughs> I know I'm a scumbag. I get it. But, look, I'm very appreciative that the Tonight Show has me huh? more than anybody else. But <laughs> I got no bitches about the Tonight Show, believe me. I, I know I'm not a first guest guy. Apparently, I was at 1230. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my career's falling a little bit, but fine. I'm not C-list anymore. <laughs> I don't uh, do no shoe shines anymore. You've been away a long time, <laughs> Billy. Uh, he was good though. <laughs> Come on, you feel strong? <laughs> uh, Tommy, I busted your balls over here. Come on, <laughs> have a good time. Wreck my fucking party. <laughs> Everything's fine, honey. No, no, no problem. Here. Motherfucker! Mm-hmm. Keep him here. Keep that motherfucker here. Mm-hmm. When when Joe Pesci says "Keep that motherfucker here" in Goodfellas, that's the scariest line <laughs> of all. You know what? What is gonna happen when you first watch that movie? Like, what is gonna happen? To them? <laughs> He's in the bar with who are the other people in the bar? He'll be fine. <laughs> Jimmy Burke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's fine. And Henry Hill, told from the point of view of Henry Hill, and Henry, of course, never does anything. Henry's always the voice of reason. <laughs> Henry Hill's book. <laughs> Come on, guys, you're being crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? This is bad. You can't kill a person. That's illegal. <laughs> oh, God, it's such a great film. Such a great It's no Revenant. I have no desire. I have no desire to see Revenant. Maybe just the scene where DiCaprio gets mauled by the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, again, first of all, Chris Rock, Chris Rock, man, again, you know, great, great monologue. The guy is just a masterful comedian. <laughs> you know, I've watched him 
you, you know, I always stay. He's very, he's very nice to me, by the way, Chris. Uh, you know, if uh, at the comedy cellar, you know, when he walks in, it's like royalty coming in. He doesn't act that way. He's very, you know, he's great to talk to, and he, he does. He, he laughs. The funniest guy's always laughing up. A lot <laughs> of guys think, uh, I think a lot of guys who don't have the talent try to get by with attitude. Uh, guys like, I won't say any mentioned guys' names, but, you know, comics, uh, guys like uh, Janine Garofalo. <laughs> Janine Garofalo's uh, had a, this is what her only punchline was in the uh, in the 90s, rolling her eyes. <laughs> Tough to kill on an album. She goes, you guys see the, the movie Speed? <laughs> and then executives will go, don't even ask her. Don't even, I mean, she's thinking something so funny. Way funnier, way smarter than any of us could think. Maybe Margaret Cho's the only one who could think it because she's that smart. <laughs> on the same way. <laughs> she got by with that bullshit. Millions of dollars. Millions, millions, millions of dollars. People wrote punchlines, you know, got a spot at the funny bone. <laughs> Two million dollar deal on HBO. What happened there? Oh. <laughs> Rolling your eyes doesn't work after fade in on a fucking script. <laughs> you fucking cunt. <laughs> Man, she treated me like shit. By the way, I might see her on the set of the Jim Gaffigan show. Oh, God. are you serious? No, I'm doing another Gaffigan. Oh. I got called for my second Jim Gaffigan show, which I'm very uh, pleased with. Jim is uh, Jim's great yeah. on that show, man. You know, we we all did cameos in one of the episodes last year. Uh, a bunch of comics playing themselves, me and Atel and Kyle and uh, the great Voss and uh, Bonnie's wife, two very funny people. Um, you know, we all we all played ourselves in the scene, and it was fun. So I got called for my second. Uh, me and Gilbert are doing a cameo. <laughs> together we're shooting at march 15th and of course uh j uh, jg as i call her j ga <laughs> garofalo was uh, in it well she was a bitch to me too so what'd she do to you just she was arrogant when, when? What, what? What uh when? no we just we uh how'd you meet her they brought around the people that were on air america to uh, syndicate their shows where and uh to this syndication company that i worked for premiere and she was one of the people and mark maron was really nice and the other uh rachel maddow was there too and janine garofalo was just a total fucking bitch like okay i'm too good for this oh fuck you i saw your fucking movie oh that's how she uh that's how yeah. she is really that's how she treated me yeah that's how she, she, she thought me and norm after the dirty work i saw her and she was like giving dirty work she like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Give me a fucking break. So, uh, what was I talking about? Uh, Gaffigan. Yeah, Gaffigan. Yeah, so maybe I'll see her. I got the... Well, it's great news. Guess who's making their benefits again this year? <laughs> and uh, I got a lot of great feedback, by the way, on that Apatow thing I shot, which is cool. That's... It's going to air in the late spring on uh, the show Crashing, the name of the pilot episode directed by Judd Apatow, called Artie Lang. Thank <laughs> you. Not even kidding. And again, not even kidding. That's right, motherfuckers. Don't count me out. <laughs> and I'm glad to have had the opportunity to be a comedian. <laughs> the only real profession in the world, comedy. And you got a great reception for the Ari Shafir show. Dan, please. April 4th. What are you talking about? The uh, Storyteller show. That's when it's premiering, April 4th. The, the ding you hear is going to be Dan putting down the crowbar he <laughs> used for that plug. <laughs> what, is that? What, are you, what are you doing? It's like we never even met or something. <laughs> he doesn't laugh at all. But then he goes, bye bye, Ari Shafir. <laughs> what, what's going on? I mean, what's the stress about? Look at us. Calm down. <laughs> Wait, I'm where not. You act like you're waiting you for like, asked... news. Like, you're waiting to see if your baby's black. <laughs> Don't tell me you were at Bernie Williams' CD release party. <laughs> I saw you talking to Willie Randolph. <laughs> my God. Don't tell me my, my kids are chocolate here. <laughs> 
Now, why are you so stressed? What's the matter? I, you asked for the paper this morning. I what paper? Scooted for the newspaper. I scooted into my room and I grabbed it. I, what are you talking about? And you said you. I scooted. Make... <laughs> yeah, no, no heterosexuals are scooted. <laughs> <laughs> I scooted in my room. <laughs> <laughs> I scooted it to my room. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I scooted it to my room. I scooted it to my room. I need to go into my safe room now. Oh dude. <laughs> this is you know what it's not a safe place for you right now. <laughs> if you were if you're a Brown University, you would have to <laughs> You would be able to get me kicked out if what, if what the next five minutes is going to happen. <laughs> I don't even know. I everything I have to say would really affect our friendship. <laughs> I scooted in my room. I don't think I've, I've never heard a chick say that. First of all, that's like from the forties or something. I scooted to get my suit set. <laughs> I scooted to get the record player. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, the, what are you talking about? What, what, what does that have to do with anything? I mean, you look nervous. That, that was the first thing. Yeah, you said you, you make me nervous. I, I've I, never seen someone, You oh, asked for something that no, went and got well, it. I've never seen someone scoot before. <laughs> I went and got it. Is that what scooting is? Yes. Don't ever scoot again. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Rizzuto's nickname was Scooter. In 1938, they gave it to him. <laughs> oh, this podcast has been all over the place. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, well, no, I'm, just not, that's not that particular incident, <laughs> dude. You're very, very nervous. So you can show, okay, get this. I got your hands out of here. Snap my hands. <laughs> Flippin' comes in here with a fucking Met shirt that hasn't been washed <laughs> in 10 days, sits down and adds something. We don't want to add some head. <laughs> I don't know, I figure you wanted Artie saying something libelous. <laughs> I don't know, is it my fault? <laughs> I don't know, I thought it'd be funny if Artie accused one of the biggest comedians of rape. <laughs> well, it'd be funny if Ryan said the first and last names of two co <laughs> comedians involved in a major felony. <laughs> I thought that's what the podcast was about. I'm a libertarian. Free form, baby. Yeah, I'm a libertarian. What are you, pussy? I thought you wanted, you know, me to air already saying nigger. <laughs> Off the air. Without cotton here. Talking to Gino about traffic. <laughs> I don't know. What are we? What are we? Fags? <laughs> Flipping uh, on Twitter, some guy goes, "Oh, if you know, some of these assholes are trying to say like I'm a, I'm a pussy. Oh, you know, hey man, seven bucks a month already claims he's going to be uncensored. Why does he say the N word?" <laughs> I was telling the story. First of all, you know, first of all, I don't say that. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get what, what I what I wanted to do with this podcast was an example words like the n word or something. I, I'm, I'm not a proponent of that word. It's, you know, it's an ugly word. I, I make that the, the the way the comedy bits I've done that involve that word make fun of the fact or point out the fact that it's startling, a startling word. It's not because I'm racist and hearing that is startling. Like when you see a. Like I said, like a dark-skinned black guy kiss a blonde. It's startling. <laughs> Bad example. But. My old roommate, Orlando Jones, he's like a brother to me. I consider him a relative. I would jump in front of a train for Orlando. Really good guy. We lived together. I shared a toilet with a black man for months. <laughs> so point to that. I could check for, I could check for a single salt once a month. <laughs> I come from a closed-minded area. My mother thought you could get AIDS from buying an Elton John record from. <laughs> but uh, I would say to my mother, and like, <laughs> and like after 1985, I'd take my the bus at the corner to go to New York. I go, but where, where are you going? New York. What about AIDS? <laughs> That's what she would say. <laughs> I don't know what about it. I'm not going to blow Rock Hudson in a fucking <laughs> urinal. <laughs> 
go to Show World <laughs> before it turns into a Starbucks <laughs> ten years from now. In the exact place where there's a where there is a uh, What's that? Uh, Cold Stone Creamery? Is yes. The ice cream place? Right. The mm-hmm. ice cream place, Cold Stone Creamery, where kids get little... Uh, that exact place had a show world that you went inside, and there was a man who looked like Don King if you never got into boxing. <laughs> <laughs> and sweating, like he was going through full-blown opiate withdrawal, <laughs> with a microphone and a shitty speaker next to it, and all he would say, every three seconds, he would go, Pussy, pussy, pussy. <laughs> That's where the cold stump cream is. Mm. I loved it there. <laughs> Kids sitting in the corner with a blender for no reason. <clears throat> you won't buy a blender? No. There was a uh, makeshift club in the back called Club Quintessence. <laughs> uh, There's also a similar club with the same name in Staten Island. I don't know if it was that lawsuit, same people. I don't know. It was going so well in Staten Island, they opened it up, <laughs> opened it up in the back of a porn shop. <laughs> <laughs> There's a club. There was a Hispanic disc jockey. I'm not going to be like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been uh, Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. Whatever. He was Hispanic, and he was you know one of the first guys like you know doing the, the two turntables and all that bullshit like Jam Master J mm-hmm. with the uh, headset on and shit. Oh, yeah. And that was a cool look, man. When the, when uh, the black guy, got the you know, Jam SJ's got the fucking thing hooked up to his ear and he's leaning over to keep it on his ear and he's setting up the new record. Man, that's, that shit's genius. That's creative genius. These fucking dumb white people and the fucking, these dumb rednecks in the South. It's the worst part about the, like, the Klan guys. <laughs> white niggers are dumb. Yeah, really? <laughs> Except for the bunch that are geniuses. <laughs> Like a guy figured that out. Think of, think of such creativity. Like that. a guy figured out and take those songs, put one in queue, and come back. And the show vinyl has touched on that a little bit. You could tell it. Uh, this guy, it's 1973. According to historians, in 74, uh, hip hop was sort of invented by this guy named DJ Herc, a uh, black guy in the, the Bronx. You're nodding your head. Yeah. That's what you're <laughs> My, well, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> I can't help it. I'm like listening to the story and nodding my head. Yes. I... Yeah. Uh, is that the motion you usually have when you get a job, right? <laughs> when you're in the interview process. I guess so. Rachel Maddow has never sucked cock then, right? Maybe fake cock. <laughs> Strap on. Brian Williams. I have never sucked a dick myself. <laughs> I definitely was not blowing a guy after our helicopter went down. <laughs> Uh, yeah, DJ Hercules was his real full, you know, he calls him Hercules. I guess you thought that meant strength or something. But uh, DJ Herc was his short for that, so they call him DJ Herc. And uh, supposedly he figured all that shit out, like put one in the queue and then coming back and like mixing it up. <laughs> like, you know, just starts playing it on the street. Uh, you know, the Wu Tang clan all have big houses in Staten Island. He died in the gutter. No justice at all. But that, that's fucking genius. Who could think of that? Much respect. And uh, that show vinyl, I got to say, we gave it a lot of shit. But I love it. I'm way into it now. And uh, he's poised. It's a good time to start a music show because it's 1973. So clearly he uh, he's on the verge of discovering um, and help promoting uh, punk music, punk rock, which was uh, as big as it got for about five years. From 75 to 79-ish, uh, punk rock was the deal. I mean, to the point where like people like Townsend and all the guys like Who and the Stones are like, oh, was, take it over, we're done. <laughs> and it imploded on itself. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the songs started to blend together, but that first, uh, that first Sex Pistols album, Never mind the bollocks. Fucking amazing. <laughs> and of course the Ramones. And, I mean the Clash were considered punk. The Clash to me are like fucking almost classical music. I, they're so great. But weren't around a long time. Joe Strummer. Checked out too early. But uh, and of course hip hop. So he's got he's got uh, it's clear he might get involved with this guy uh, Richie Finestro. Canale Canavale plays the the lead. He's 
if he touches on one of those, punk rock or, or uh, hip hop, which, you know, was, of course, rap when I was a kid. That's what we called it. The culture of hip hop. I wasn't schooled on that by Russell Simmons with a lisp. <laughs> No, the, 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 the hip hop culture the, the, the <laughs> it's three things. It's like graffiti, it's break uh, dancing, and uh, rap music. That's hip hop. Okay, go make something else up in your fucking bedroom. <laughs> That's why kids bought it. Dad clearly afraid of the Simmons family. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't even get a nod of the head for that. <laughs> well, now you make me aware of it. Chris Christie, <laughs> first of all, Trump's plane, does it need, like, the, the, the mechanics have to be warned about Christie? <laughs> Christie comes everywhere now. How miserable must his home life be? <laughs> First of all, does Chris Christie shit on that plane? <laughs> I know we discussed this, but that's a real issue. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, these people are human beings, okay? And Melania goes, okay, I'm definitely not coming to any caucuses <laughs> or primaries. Or, what are they, primaries? Primaries? No. <laughs> Uh, with with uh, uh, Jackie Gleason on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> what the fish hits? Imagine Melania and Donald talking about, <laughs> you know, their Christmas party at Mar-a-Lago. I don't want that same caterer. <laughs> I don't want the... <laughs> 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 uh. Chris Christie just shit out his lap band. <laughs> <laughs> Trump has to pull him aside and go, listen, I want you to be the running mate, but my God, my God. I don't need a running mate with the runs. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the runs, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't I'm sorry, I can't help with the kale. It, I think one of these Black Lives Matter people put some some shit on the kale. <laughs> Maybe it was the quarter pound of the cheese you ate like an aspirin. <laughs> Listen, just widen the seats. Just widen the seats. <laughs> so it's an awkward moment. We want him to just think it's one seat. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to have a seatbelt exp- extender. Oh, God. You know they don't listen to that rule. How do you give a press conference with seatbelts on? Huh? <laughs> Okay, we're hitting some uh, okay, we're hitting some uh, turbulence, Mr. Sanders. <laughs> just stop the press conference. <laughs> There'll be no press conferences. Chris Christie's is opening act, by the way. Now. <laughs> Chris Christie's like the Washington Generals. <laughs> look at Eric. Look at his son. That son, Eric Trump. He looks like a fucking SS soldier. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Trump has won Georgia, Massachusetts, Virginia. Look at his hair. Wow, Massachusetts. That's does, yeah, Massachusetts and Georgia he won, which is so rare. Yeah. Because one is like, you know, legalized pot, hippies, and, you know, and uh, the other are the Klan. <laughs> Here we go, he's Trump. Wages have been poor, and everything's poor, and everything's doing badly, but we're going to make it. She's been there for so long. I mean, if she hasn't straightened it out by now... He's making a big announcement tonight, he said. Oh, yeah? Yep. It's just going to become worse and worse. She wants to make America whole again, and I'm trying to figure out what is that all about. Mm. Make America great again is going to be much better than making America whole again. So I just want to say that this was an exciting evening. It's so great to be in the <laughs> <Don't have purpose. laughs> It's so great to be Are you, are you uh, drinking I, wine I, over there? I got the <laughs> bought bad Coke in Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What happened? What? <laughs> I'm waiting on some issues. I'm protecting some people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a four twenty. I'm forty eight guys. I have, I have no reason to lie to anybody anymore. I sold my house down the shore, by the way, so I think. So. I have no money problems now. <laughs> it's got a bunch of cash. <laughs> I may move to London. I may move to London and start all over again. <laughs> Little senator do exactly as they want. They can put 20 to 25 million dollars into it over the next two weeks. Trump just came over the 
And frankly, I think that's fine as far as people I'm are thinking. There's a microphone next to Chris Christie on the stage with him. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry, Donald. Again, the kale. These Black Lives Matter. Those motherfuckers. They gotta be fucked with the food. This never happens to me. Your wife says it happens eight times a day. Chris, do you mind start wearing a diaper? <laughs> Uh, Chris Christie's got an enormous stuff. Look at him standing behind Trump. Look at him standing behind Trump. Or not. It's weird. Look at him. He's looking at him like, I should be you. I should be you, you fucking orange fuck. Uh, uh, I'm one bullet away from the president. fucking bullet. I'm in Mar-a-Lago, honey. How are you raising the two chubby kids? <laughs> Hello, Miss Christie. It's your husband, Chris. It's the loser. You said it can't do anything. <laughs> While you're watching our maid give those two chubby fucks a bath, that's where I am. I'm standing behind his orange hair. How great a company we built. I'm getting blown by an illegal Mexican. I feel like I can say anything because no one's listening. I mean, our nation is in serious trouble. We're being killed. Imagine if a big star was saying this show. China is just taking advantage of us. I have nothing against China. I have great Imagine if Hannibal Burris. You wouldn't be on that Samsung commercial. Hannibal Burris is doing celebrity endorsement. If you put me and Hannibal Burris in the middle of any public square, <laughs> people would think he's my driver. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Samsung. Mm. I just laugh about he's a very nice guy and a brilliant comic, by the way. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, I don't know, celebrity things. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's going to show to the fourth week. <laughs> It is incredibly ironic, by the way, that, you know, uh, try, uh, Cosby was taken down all these women all these years. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't blame women. I did, you know, it, it, some people actually sound mad that women don't come forward after being raped. I mean, well, if, if anyone who pretends to know anything that a woman's going through after being raped, it, it's just an asshole. Just like, I don't know what, what, what they're going through, what, what they have to deal with. Everybody's different. <laughs> My God, could you... You, you know, you just imagine that. Uh, some of these guys just sound so misogynist about that. I'm like, don't you have, you have sisters? You have moms? Can you imagine <laughs> someone raped your sister or mother? My God. I'd be murderous. I'd say, I'd say to the cops, you got to keep me away from them because I don't want to go to jail for killing. I mean, I, you know, I it's very hard to cave in someone's head with a bat. It's hard to <laughs> follow through, you know. <laughs> someone rapes uh, someone you know, man, including Dan. If Dad scoots out of the room, you're right. <laughs> oh. Well, there was a rapist, and I scooted out of there. And he scooted after me. <laughs> that rapist could scoot. <laughs> <laughs> and he got me right in my scoot shoot. <laughs> I got raped right in my scoot shoot. <laughs> my scooter shooter. Ugh. You know, uh, so anyway, but some women did say stuff. Like Janice Dickinson, of course, she's batshit crazy and no one believed her. <laughs> Janice Dickinson did so much to hurt their cause. Those interviews with her, <laughs> she's like the first supermodel according to her with uh, lips that look like uh, A-Rods on steroids. <laughs> Wait, those aren't steroids. <laughs> Do you have any lip steroids? What, A-Rod? Lip steroids? It's for the chicks when I eat their pussy. <laughs> It's for the chicks who are not my wife when I eat their pussy. My, I'm not A-Rod's wife, pussy. <laughs> Janice Dickinson gets on like, you know, Mar- 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 what's her name, Marcy? Bombshell tonight. What's her name? Oh, uh, Southern chick. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. the blonde. Bombshell tonight. Mm. Nancy Grace? Nancy Grace. Yeah. yeah. She gets in there and goes, we were all raped. Mm. Do, do you understand? He violated me. He touched my elbow. She's the one chick. I don't believe. <laughs> I really want to do. But you know all those broads, and you know it takes a, a black comic, a, 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 you know, a brilliant, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, very sort of Cosby esque in a lot of ways. You know, Hannibal is a, 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 a very smooth guy. He's very, he's like eloquent, you know, and uh, and presents himself that way, and uh, it's fun to watch him. You know, it's uh, some guys are like that. They just, it's that sort of, they, they let the audience come to them. I was like that about his style. He, he's not afraid to have pauses, which is, 
you know, a sign of confidence up there. And when you have that when you're young, it's key. Uh, and, you know, it's odd that that's the person that takes down Cosby. Someone who, you know, you'd probably think would consider Cosby a hero. In some ways, maybe he does. But, you know, that was sort of untouchable, I think. I mean, maybe a lot of those big uh, those big black comics had to know what was going on, maybe. But it would never touch it. I asked Chappelle up in Montreal when Cosby was given, all those depositions came out. And they were talking about that deposition he gave years ago. That was in the news. And I was talking to you know, Neil Brennan and Chappelle uh, about it up in uh, up in Montreal. And I asked Dave, I said, do you have any relationship with him? He goes, he called me once. And it was weird. I mean, you know, I guess every black comic, when they get to a certain level of fame, they get the call from Cosby. Hmm. <laughs> Don't curse. Okay. Mm-hmm. How's that raping going? <laughs> in the fucking, that's why in the uh, in the seventies, you know, at that, that the height of all this bullshit, when he was raping every chick who applied to Temple, <laughs> when he started raping every woman born after nineteen fifty two, you know, he used to call Richard Pryor and publicly say, "You're setting back the race." <laughs> You're being vulgar on stage. Your Uncle Tommy, you, you, you know, uh, try to work on that, brother. Hmm. Uh, okay, great. Pr- prior, you know, was in show business. Man. He probably he had to know a little bit about what was going on hmm. <laughs> firsthand, maybe. And uh, he's getting yelled at by this guy for cursing. <laughs> for cursing. That's like Charles Manson yelling at you for, you know, grabbing a woman's arm too tightly. <laughs> You don't, don't grab an arm that tight. You treat a woman with respect. <laughs> yeah. Before you know it, you'll be dragging her and making her murder somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Richard Pryor had to be going, okay, I won't curse. All right. Uh, is it my turn? <laughs> Can I go, Taz? <laughs> discuss what you're doing? That's the thing about, about life. you know. Howard always had that great line about all these guys who were considered morally, ethically nicer people than Howard because on the air he'd be honest and talk about people's talk. The greatest line ever, Michael Landon was considered you know, uh, way more moral because he did shows like Highway to Heaven and Little House on the Prairie and uh, you know, Howard talked about sex hmm. on the air. You know, you know, Howard married the same woman for 20 years, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, Loyal, complained about it on the air because he was honest, but well, and uh, Michael Landon died. They called him a family guy, and Howard had the best line. I don't know if Jackie, maybe Fred wrote it, but Howard could have thought of it, uh, being there, uh, you know, on first hand, anything like that could happen. They were all just as witty. But Howard's line was, yeah, Michael Landon's a family man. He loved families. He had nine of them. <laughs> 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 I mean, what the fuck? The hypocrisy. It, you know, Richard Pryor was, you know, very public about drugs and the way he spoke on it. You know, grew up in a whorehouse, honestly, a brilliant comic. A true artist was probably ethically, morally, a nicer person than Bill Cosby was. <laughs> I mean, definitely was. That was a drug addict, you know. You do a lot of the blow he probably got in 1975 and tell me you're going to like it. <laughs> oh, Cicely Tyson's ass. <laughs> Lola Falana, I don't know, someone. Margot Kidder, we'll go with that. We don't have your Margot Kidder. The original Lois Lane. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you're a scumbag publicly, like I am, I'm considered a dirtbag. But, uh, you know, what you see is what you get with me. You know, I don't lead a healthy life. But I have a nice person. Ask anybody. I'm very generous. I try to. Too generous. Give money to cops <laughs> to get out of tickets. Yeah, about four, about fifty, about fifty one hundred people owe me money right now. <laughs> My best friends. I try to do what I can. <laughs> you know, everybody gets money from their parents. Everybody, except old Artois. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Oh, it was a gift from our parents. Oh, really? Yeah, they did nothing for 30 years, but sit, sit and look at, look, at, look at the Ottoman in the Tonight Show on a cheap black and white TV in the same robes. And it turns out uh, the factory paid enough with the pension. They left us 600 grand. <laughs> what about you, Art? 
Well, I'm waiting for to pay for my mother's hot water heater again for the <laughs> every time it blows is when I get a call. The only time she doesn't call me is scumbags when she goes, Art, the hot water heater blow. <laughs> that buys me two days of not being called an asshole. <laughs> about a day <laughs> no, and I clearly do because my, well, my mother there's no one who's worked harder no one no one they, you believe me they do not make women like my mom anymore <laughs> they don't I see other people's mothers I, you know I see you know I love I, I watched a couple episodes of that Wahlberg show I really did because I was interested in the dynamic of, you know Mark Wahlberg that family it's kind of fascinating and you know the Wahlbergs they're the real deal they're, they're not they're not some of these people who try to manufacture like the blue collar background and they grew up in the shit man they grew up by Southie in Boston. Tough kids. Like, Wahlberg's one of those movie stars who's not, like, you know, someone you fuck with. A lot of these <laughs> guys, uh, Tom Cruise's guy, oh, Alec, he's, he's movie star tough. Mark Wahlberg will drop you. Hmm. <laughs> He'll fly places to drop hmm. you. He's a dude, a neighborhood guy. Did time. And, uh, you know, obviously loyal. An entourage show kind of based on him. And, uh, you know, the, the, their mother is in that Wahlberger show. And what, what a great woman. I, I, you look at her, she reminds me of my mom. You know, they don't talk much about the dad, but, my, you know, my father clearly was a flawed guy, and it sounded like their dad might have been a little bit. I don't know. But the mother, the mother, she, she's such a strong mother. You can tell she just got them through. She, she just kept them going. And uh, they hit. And uh, you could tell they just love her so much for it. And she's got a sense of humor and uh, still standing. Uh, reminds me of my mom. I like seeing that. I'd like to meet that woman one day, give her a hug. Maybe I'll be in tent four. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's, they just, uh, yeah, that's the point when I see, like, Mark Wahlberg's mother, like, how great, like, and, and strong she is. I'm like, my mother, I think about her. I think about some of my friends' moms. Dan's yeah, mother I haven't met. <laughs> but, you know, I they just don't make them like that anymore. My, my father fell off a roof. He fell He's a quadriplegic. Everybody said, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, Judy and my mother, you got to put him in a home. You, you mm. can't do this. You're going to have to work. Uh, your kids are going to have to work. It's terrible. It's Armageddon. There was no one to sue. You're going to have to go to the welfare office and, you know, it, 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 the, we, the house they bought for whatever I think it was like twenty five grand in nineteen sixty you know seventy or so yeah they're like you know you got to buy a uh, get, you're gonna have to build a uh, room take out another mortgage to build a room in the back you can't do it any other way and you're gonna be working forever it's gonna affect your kids it's just, and she 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 knew how hard it would be for us to go see him in a home and she knew how terrible it would be because because my dad's brain still worked. And, you know, he was going to be aware of his surroundings, but he couldn't move from the neck down. He he was a very physical guy, obviously, my dad. You know, a street guy. I dropped out of high school in 10th grade. That's the kind of guy who's going to be reading up, you know, on economics and a tale of two cities. And he liked, while well, reading the sports page, he was a guy. He was a fucking guy. He didn't need a safe place. He grew up in the gutter. And he worked his way out and broke his fucking ass. And uh, a week after he pays off the mortgage on his house, climbing roofs, he falls. And my mother knew how depressed he'd be in a home, and how depressed we'd be going to see him in a home. Didn't want us, to, and 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 because uh, you know that was an option. So my mother said, "Okay," and basically, me and my sister still teenagers, and 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 the woman, uh, you know, gets another mortgage, r r r runs the, the construction site the way she wants it to, to be built, gets a job as a secretary full time, sets the alarm so it wouldn't affect me. Because I started working on construction, whatever else I had to do. So it wouldn't affect me. Start set her alarm for every two hours so she would get up and turn him, turn my father. Because we didn't qualify for anything but the, the lowest amount of uh, government assistance. Because we had no one to sue. We had no money for a 24-7 nurse. So after 8, 9 to 5, the nurse left. And then my mother got home from work, and then her work they started. Wow. Feed him. Cook him food. The same meal she cooked when he was walking because she loved it. Hand feed him. I'll start to cry if I really go over this. My mother would hand feed him. She was always tired, my mom. And then my sister, who's another insanely classy person, sees that it'd be better. She gets out of, she puts herself through FIT bartending, gets school loans. This is what she did, okay? 
these millennials bitching. It was bartending, worked their ass off, put herself through FIT, got the, the 10 years after working for places like Ralph Lauren, becoming a top designer, finally paid off the loans. Every ounce of something she has, she bought. And, and my mother, uh, while my sister's doing that at FIT, and I'm basically becoming a drug addict and a gambling addict and going from uh, bad job to bad job, that's what I did. That was my contribution at that point. Uh, my mother got up every two hours, even when I wasn't working, and turned him because if he'd stayed on that side longer than two hours, a bed sore would develop. Wow. So she got up and turned him every two hours. And then at seven, she got up, turned him again, the maid would come at eight while she was showering to go to work. That's the kind of others like like Mark Wahlberg's mom is and my mom. It's like you know, I've had girlfriends. As soon as I get, as soon as I have to buy me a thermometer, they leave. No. <laughs> Look, Art. It sounds like you're getting a fever. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Art, you have a cough. Listen, I'm willing to get you some uh, no Robitussin. I'll leave with the doorman, but I didn't sign up for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> Take a walk. Don't let the fucking door hit you on the fucking back of your overpriced fucking jeans. <laughs> anyway, Chris Christie's enormous. <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, that's what my mom did. Four and a half years. And wept like a baby when he died. Diabetes complications. All because she didn't want it to, to didn't want it to affect us. And uh, that, that that's that's better care than a, a billionaire gives their kids. Like Melania Trump, she does it on her own with a chef and an executive assistant. <laughs> oh my God! If if they lined up. Uh, people in the world based on integrity and class, well, people like Melania Trump and like the Paris Hiltons of the world, they would have to stand on someone's shoulders just to get a glimpse at the back of my mother and sister's fucking heads at the front of the line. <laughs> Mrs. Wahlberg, too. <laughs> How about the mother in Hoop Dreams? I think about that. That one mother of the kid, the skinnier kid, you know, Danny? The, yeah, A.G. A.G., yeah. Right. Her mom. Uh, his that, mom. That's unbelievable. How about that fucking woman? Yeah. Okay? The worst ghetto of Chicago. They tell her her son, uh, you know, has a shot. Deals with these racist pricks at these fucking private schools. And that kid, you know, hey, man, the kid gets up every day, 4 a.m. to get three buses, three hours to school, comes back. And his mother... Just gets them by. Junkie father, you know, what the hell? I'm not judging the guy, but it's a rough time, man. In and out of the kid's life, and the kid clearly loves the father, but, you know, it's... And the mother deals with it, forgives him. It, it's, it's like God putting one of his angels here or something. And she she's the one, she, she keeps the lights on, the heat on. You know, Make sure each one of them has a birthday. Make sure there's a cake and candles. Uh, you know. Well, what about that woman for president? <laughs> she got my vote. Mrs. Ag, hoop dreams. She was a full-time nurse, right? Full, right. She remember? became a nurse. Yeah. She put herself through nursing school. <laughs> remember, she graduated from nursing school. That's right. Apart. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. That's right. Think about that when you see these women get interviewed. <laughs> Melania Trump. <laughs> oh man. She wants fuck her pre her husband's running for president. She wants fucking. Uh, uh, she goes, "What? Well, I go to the debates. <laughs> I get on the private jet and go to the debates while I'm uh, massaged." Mrs. Ag man, <laughs> put herself through nursing school. There's a life that matters. I tell you, man, I, just, uh, I remember watching that woman. I cried at that part of Hoop Dreams, man. For by the way, for you people who don't know. Uh, for you millennials, it's something that doesn't start. Ed Hathaway or Channing Tatum. <laughs> Dopes. A four-hour documentary. They follow two kids over four years of their lives. 
and the other kid's a great kid too, from a great family. Kid's older brother, the other kid who lived in Cabrini Green, and you know, neither one of them made it. And what? What? I always ask Danny, what happened to those kids? Uh, the well, the one went to Marquette. If I'm not, Gates went to Marquette, right? They and covered, tore up they, his knee, right? They, he got hurt. Yeah. yeah, and I think he. He, then he had a couple of side jobs, yeah. and AG went. AG, if I remember right, won the city championship. They right. lost in the state championship by by he a couple never of points. Got that tall though, either, right? AG. No, you're right. And Same then, thing with basketball, man. You got to get tall, right? Yeah. And then he went down to like Southern Louisiana, like a small right. school. And I think he might have gotten a look at an NBA team, but I'm not sure. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's uh... yeah, 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 yeah. I hope the mom's still alive and happy. Because if anyone deserves it, I mean, a woman like that is not getting into heaven, or my mom, or like I say, Wahlberg's mom. These mom, these, these mothers, these, these people, these women that don't exist anymore. Listen, Art, I, I, you know, I, you, you, we ran out of shampoo, and you know, you didn't have any, and I just, I did not sign up for this. <laughs> At salon select those level five. I told you, I need six. I need six. And if the maid doesn't understand that, I mean, I don't have manageable hair. <laughs> Art, I didn't sign up for this. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going to take the Range Rover. <laughs> no. Bye! <laughs> now, my sister has all that work ethic my mother had. It's, it's like, again, I understand it's from a different era. And we, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, we're Americans. I get it. We don't want to do the shit jobs anymore. I understand. Uh, I, I get it. It's, it's very hard to get a yuppie white kid to stand outside of 7-Eleven selling coke. It's real. <laughs> Chris Christie and Donald Trump have to rethink this two shot. <laughs> Are you looking at this? Look at the look on Christie's face. Look at him. He looks like he's looking at, you know, he looks like he's looking at Caitlyn Jenner's pussy. <laughs> He's looking at Donald Trump, the back of Donald Trump's hair, like he's looking at Caitlyn Jenner's pussy. <laughs> I've got our promo now. They just moved to the right. Moved to the right. <laughs> and then Eric Trump, Trump's Nazi son. They're at the pop it. By the way, that's some conference room, a press conference room they're having in their house. <laughs> that's their house in Palm Beach. Is Melania in the house, Donald? She's on the sixth floor. That's where they give the massages. <laughs> She's always up there with Marco Rubio. <laughs> look at the look on Chris Christie's face. He's got a shit. Oh, uh, he gave he gave a scratch on his face. That's an occasion of his wife and oh my god, a shit. He might be shitting right now. That's it. He's got the diaper on. Chris Christie is shitting right now behind the. <laughs> Oh, look, he went to the back. Uh, He's shitting. <laughs> I'm going to make America good. Uh, look at him. Look at him. He's going to pass out. <laughs> Donald's a Nazi uh, son has uh, <laughs> has Christie's insulin. Wait, I got to blow my nose in. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh. <God>. oh. <laughs> Last week, the towels. If you, if you, uh, <laughs> if you collected all the. The tissues in my uh, hotel room at Pittsburgh, <laughs> if the cops collected them, there'd be, a, uh, just testing my snot, there'd be enough for possession within 10, 5 to 10 years. Oh. We'll get to that full story. <laughs> Pittsburgh, by the way, great people. I, try, I tweeted this a little bit. Pittsburgh is a very interesting town for me. Chris Christie's not pissing, I think. <laughs> Chris Christie's like, man, that's a bloody one. Yeah. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Oh, God, my assistant is not going to be happy. <laughs> Did I put the do not disturb on my, my door? <laughs> oh, no. Nothing worse than walking on three crying maids in hazmat suits. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Well, I'm telling you, Black Lives Matter got into Mar-a-Lago. I'm telling you now, they put something in the food, Donald. It's not me. This oh. never happens. Governor, listen, I was going to make you the running, but I can't do it. I need someone with with better... <laughs> with better... With better <laughs> who doesn't have Crohn's disease? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Something you don't hear on the Gianna De Laurentiis uh, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm gonna start swimming, eating fish. Uh, so yeah, my mother. Think about her. So that woman deserves everything. Not since her fault. She got dealt a bad hand. And my old man was a great man and on top of the piece of sheetrock in the in the uh in the garage this is what else he left me <laughs> 46 years old and never will waste of paper great dad though there's nothing i didn't want as a kid uh, 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 nothing i i wanted as a kid that i didn't, i mean like i say in my book my first book i didn't realize i wasn't rich <laughs> until i met a rich person because, you know, I went up, I came on, I come on, it was always nice veal cutlets. My mother made good salad. We got a TV. It was nice. Everything was clear. A nice glove. You know? And then you, you meet rich people. You meet people who had the, uh, the pools and uh, the two different houses, a vacation home, and whatever that meant. I mean, but but I, I didn't even know. I was like, this is, I, I, I wouldn't even consider myself spoiled. Nothing. And if I. If I asked my father for a Porsche, I would have got it. He would have stolen it, of course. But... <laughs> no. I'm not, by the way, not kidding. I did realize by 17 that rich kids probably did not have a first car that they bought for $400. <laughs> $74 Matador. Uh, rich kids probably didn't pay for their first three cars and wait for change from the guy. <laughs> but... Uh, didn't want for a thing. Greatest parents. I was a horrible student. But it, we, we failed. Again, the, I failed gym once. I, I, I just was laying in the back not doing the opening exercises. I didn't think the teacher could see me. Apparently he could. And he gave me five points negative every time I didn't do it. Didn't tell me. Warned me. And uh, he needed a 15 or something to graduate. I had a negative 80 or something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, summer school for gym, ninth grade. I had to go to summer school in twelfth grade. That was for something else, geometry, or and uh, some sort of math, algebra, maybe. I don't. Know. I didn't even look at it. <laughs> Literally did not open the book. They asked if I had any. The, the first day, the teacher asked if we had any nicknames. She wanted to be hip and call us by our nicknames. I put down Skipper. <laughs> and the uh, first four weeks she called me Skipper I raised my hand for every question and she called me Skipper and me and these two black kids in the back would laugh for four hours <laughs> she went what's the blah, 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 blah. I had no idea what she was talking about I would pull my hand up she went Skipper and went, <laughs> 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 by the fourth week she said you know Arthur I don't think your nickname is Skipper <laughs> <laughs> my buddy Byron Moore one of the black kids said well, you was a genius. <laughs> Where's his HBO special? Well, you was a genius. Again, of course, most African Americans don't speak like that. <laughs> I love it. People go, you sound like a black guy. I love how politically correct guys. What does a black guy sound like? <laughs> you don't know. What do they sound like? Kevin Hart in every movie he does. How about that? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, wait, let's get the Poppy Harlow fucking commentary. <laughs> <clears throat> so, salute, mother. I bust balls. You deserve everything you get from me because that's all I gave you is money. There is some miracle 
by some miracle, I, you know, uh, the odds were not on me. My Uncle Tommy became kind of a second father to me until I, you know, made it as a comic. I was 27, didn't take that long. 27, I started making about 500 grand a year. I haven't looked back. Everybody got taken care of, believe me. Everybody. <laughs> Fucking kids, I bought me a flaming shot of Zambuca at a bachelor party in 1987 at the Knights of Columbus and Linden. They're like, hey, how about a car? <laughs> you still owe me for that Zambuca I bought you. <laughs> how do I never see you again? Let's cut a deal. I'll give me 500 cash right now. I never want to see your face again. Okay. <laughs> until until you're awake. That's when I see your fucking formaldehyde up face, bloated. I tell your mother I liked you. <laughs> I, had no, I had no idea he was doing drugs. It was a shock to all of us. <laughs> yeah. Salud, mama. Salud. Rachel Maddow and Brian Williams looking very concerned. <laughs> Yes, this broad Rachel Maddow. We should have went out looking for pussy together. <laughs> the minor bird won uh, Texas. So, so she's the first guest on the Tonight Show. And the second producer, it's like, you know, let's just, I mean, come on. Let's see. I said, they all have to be so positive now. I like the old cynical guys. Some of the, the guys at Conan, Frank Smiley and Dan Ferguson, my two favorite second producers on the planet. Frank and Danny, and I, 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 I'm always very proud of my Conan's uh, sets. When, you know, I speak to him. Uh, sitting down at the panel. I've been doing it for close to 20 years. I've been doing the Conan O'Brien show. Wow. <laughs> They've always been good to me, man. First major late night talk, so I did it. I had a kind of prestigious thing amongst comedy, amongst comedy people. Uh, very, very popular. And now the show, by the way, better than, as good as it's ever been, maybe better. Because TBS leaves them alone. It's just like all these amazing creative people, really bright, in this incubator on the Warner Brothers lot. Just two sets down from where we did the, the Norm show for two years on that great Warner Brothers lot, classic lot. Oh, the fucking closer for pussy that was. I had a drive on fucking. Oh. There was just one chick from Playboy Flangere <laughs> I met through a friend. And oh, my God. Took her on the fucking golf cart. That move. Yeah. I had a drive on fucking pass. I, I I parked two feet from the stage, hmm. closer than where fucking the Matthew Perry parked for Friends, which was right around the fucking block. <laughs> ER Friends was right next to the fucking Ray Romano walking around. Got a bro in the car. That's kidnapping. <laughs> the first year I was at two years of that was my life, <laughs> making thirty five grand a week. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Dad. He got me through it. You hmm. did. You got me through my child there, my protector. And, uh, you checked out too early, Pops. I would love to buy you a steak on that lot, <laughs> but I'm serious. Uh, but I had a black Eldorado with jersey plates. Typical <laughs> Gindaloo move. First time I got a little money. Black Eldo with jersey plates. Oh, my God. Norm used to laugh. Hey, man, how's the Lucchese for them? You know? <laughs> hey, man, have they made you yet? <laughs> Norm was witty. <laughs> But that was parked, I parked my Eldorado <laughs> like right on the corner of one of the Warner Brothers uh, buildings. And Clint Eastwood had his, you know, every Clint Eastwood movie, if you notice, is a Warner Brothers film. And that's where his deal is. So he's making a film at the time, of course. And he used to drive all over the lot by himself on a golf cart. <laughs> and uh, he would take the turn really tight by where I parked every day. And a lot of times during break, Norm and I would be out uh, throwing a ball, play catch with a football. And um, hoping the tour would go by and a cute chick would recognize him. <laughs> uh, but I, every day, Clint Eastwood would take the turn really tight, and he would miss my car by like a foot. <laughs> and I would go, listen, he's got to be pushing 70. I'd say to Norm, what if he hits my car? <laughs> like, it's my car. It's just him on the car. You know, assistant, he's going to have to deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> On some human level, <laughs> me and Cleese would have to go, well, you got your stuff on here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already Arthur Lang. You see that? Now? You are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be dead. 
it. I have no damage. <laughs> just if you can wait, I just want to check it out. Just get a flashlight. Your I mean, flu actually works with your Clint Eastwood voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> believe me, I can do it good anyway. <laughs> uh, I saw him rolling Allison. He's one of the other ones. It's his daughter. So uh, he would take the turn. And I said, oh, God, please hit the fucking car. <laughs> I would say, hey, hey, whoa, 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 buddy. Hey, hey, old timer. <laughs> What's what, what? What are you doing over there? That's a brand new Eldo. <laughs> Probably had enough money on him to buy another car. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, pal. Being that this is a 1998 Eldorado, one of the fastest cars on the on the road, and it could tear your head clear off, <laughs> I'd ask myself a question: Do I have my insurance information? <laughs> well, do you, punk? <laughs> oh, I had it all set. Norm said that's great if you want to be a hack. <laughs> anyway, he never hit my car. There's the next progressive commercial. I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? That woman. That's. What does that have to do? Huh? Is it? A oh, well, I'm sorry. Right, sure. Right, right, right. That that would be a good version of it. Here. <laughs> the progressive people have now made forty-one thousand commercials <laughs> with that woman. Not one has had anything funny. About it. <laughs> like it's a premise. It's a premise that didn't I, work from the second it I started. Don't. I guarantee, from the second it was read in an, in an audition. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody was f anybody who was generally funny in the room, like if David Taylor, Norm, or uh, Greer Barnes, <laughs> pick a funny guy, was in the room, Neil Patrick Harris, <laughs> Zach Efron, if there were a funny person in the room, if you know, uh, Larry David was in the room, they'd go, he would go, doesn't work, it's not funny, <laughs> this isn't gonna work, just stop, just rewrite it. He would have known it from the first time a chick read it at the audition. <laughs> He would probably know it when he read the piece of paper, but he went there as a courtesy. <laughs> and he went, all right, look, you have to stop. Stop. It's not funny at all. You need a guy to be a dick in a comedy room. That's the way it gets funny. You're nodding your head again. Uh, and that would have been it. No one said it because they're not funny. They think it's funny. So they made 41,000 unfunny commercials. <laughs> oh, that chick's probably loaded. I mean, you know, She's got to be making at this point. Well, it has been like two, three years, yes. right? Longer than that, I think. She's making a real scratch. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. John Belushi doing the Elizabeth Taylor COVID up the chicken. <laughs> you know, again, I know Belushi hated that bit or Bill Murray's interview <laughs> for Hollywood Corner, <laughs> and. Uh, it was when Elizabeth Taylor weighed 600 pounds <laughs> in the 70s when Joan Rivers made a career out of calling her fat. <laughs> the comedic genius people think Joan Rivers was overrated. Insanely overrated. Her jewelry was funnier than she was. Are you scared of that, Dan? I took a drink of water. Great timing. <laughs> drink during the setup. <laughs> I'm sorry, I drank some water. I mean, have a little decency, Dan. I mean, I'm the reason you're living this life of just like. Well, actually, there's a book in this, so Dan will write something. Uh, it's not old Moonlight Canoes. <laughs> but uh, uh, Dan's scooting around. <laughs> you should call it Scoot. I scooted. <laughs> scooted? Who says that? <laughs> Did somebody here in a Bowery Boys movie? Oh, God. Anyway, what was I talking about? Uh, Joan, the progressive commercial. No, I was past that. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor. Right. So Bill Murray used to do this bit called Hollywood Corner, Hollywood <laughs> Minute, or Hollywood, whatever. Or Hollywood Minute was Spade. My favorite Spade, Hollywood Minute, when Houston's bodyguard came out. He said, I saw the bodyguard last night, and uh, <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> Dan didn't like it. Maybe it was my interpretation. <laughs> so Belushi has to play Elizabeth Taylor, which is like 600 pounds at the time. So, <laughs> you, know, I get, you know, you read the books about Belushi and shit, and his wife Judy gets interviewed. And, uh, you know, he always says how uh, 
he he hated that bit because it was cheap laugh dressing up like a, a chick. <laughs> but um, you know, in the in the beginning, it's in the, right in the middle of it. He does something that's inspired. <laughs> like in the middle of the interview, he just she just takes as Elizabeth as Elizabeth Taylor just takes out like half a chicken, <laughs> half a chicken just starts eating it, and then he chokes on it. <laughs> he starts <laughs> choking in the middle of the interview, and Bill Murray keeps talking to her. You know, I hope those blue eyes continue <laughs> coming out here. The eyes I fell in love with at National Velvet. <laughs> Let's give us the Heimlich. <laughs> and he coughs up a chicken. Even when the chicken comes out of his mouth, it's funny. Oh, it's laying on the front of his dress. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. All right, he goes around. <laughs> yeah, you have to see it. <laughs> Trump wins six states, Cruz wins two. So, what does that mean? Rubio's out of. It's very, uh, you know, it'd be very hard for anyone to beat Trump right now. Yeah. What are you, a mathematician? Mm -hmm. yeah, what did he say? I think, I think he won Arkansas, right? Oh, wait. Trump, Trump won Arkansas. Trump Arkansas. So what two to Cruz win? Uh, he had to win. I don't, I don't have it in front of me, but I, I think know he won Texas. Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Because uh, that's All close right. to Texas, so I bet well, you yeah. Uh, Cruz, yeah, won Oklahoma. So I had, had killed in Texas. Mm-hmm. Rubio, I mean, what, what's Rubio going to do now? Tell more jokes? <laughs> and uh, shouldn't Bernie Sanders just go home and get, take a nice bath? <laughs> and uh, get a hooker. Send his wife out for deli. <laughs> hey, Sanders, look at his wife. I'm like, the reason you don't get a heart anymore might not be because you're 75. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Could be some other factors. <laughs> Again, I. <laughs> you can't call that rude because basically I'm saying it to me and Dan. <laughs> Very unsuccessful podcast. <laughs> yeah, th th this th th this podcast has the least listeners. There's something amazing about this format, though. I did the math. This I was talking to my accountant after expenses. I mean, this podcast is really, is, is, if you just look at just the number of people, I mean, I don't know, apparently a lot of people steal it, too, I guess. People yell out references at gigs to the podcast, so by, that does mean, you know, more people are probably, the, the, the theft numbers are staggering, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, enough decent, wonderful fans, first of all, are loyal, second of all, who are very, they can seek out some thievery, I'm sure. But they, you know what, they're paying seven bucks a month because they have the decency to go, I like this guy. I support him. It's 84 bucks a year. I like his comedy. <laughs> I like his brand of humor. <laughs> uh, I like his producer. Well, when his producer fake laughs and then has dead silence. <laughs> but, but, you know, <laughs> it, I, I love you all for, for, for signing up. But, but you know, the, 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 just the numbers, are, when you look at the numbers, they're staggeringly low. Unbelievably low. Like a fraction of stuff. But most people who are number every fucking comedian, by the way, who you talk to is always number five on iTunes. <laughs> Not one, it's always five. <laughs> That's my manager. There's a, 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 two wonderful chicks, by the way. They came here, wonderful girls, and they're 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 doing very well. Uh it's called the, the podcast is called Guys We Fucked. The girls are getting famous from it. They're, I don't remember their names, but they're very famous. <laughs> we have the, they were here for three. We set this up for four days. They were here for three hours. We have the same manager. We're in the same business. <laughs> they're considered famous, and I don't know their names. <laughs> if you put a gun to my head, I would not either know the first or last names. Anyway, podcasts with guys we fucked, and they're very shocking because they're women who talk about you know blowjobs. <laughs> We're going to talk like, you know, most Knights of Columbus. <laughs> so uh, no, they're actually, you know, uh, very talented girls. But they're always like my manager, Rick, uh, Rick Thorpe. Is like, hey, they're number five on iTunes. <laughs> really, it must be an 8,000-way tie for that. <laughs> every fucking... Uh, every fucking dickhead at the comedy cellar table has four minutes on baristas. <laughs> number five on iTunes, too. But they don't make any money because it's the advertising thing and it's hard to make money. So I have a very, very low listenership. Great loyal people. And I did the math and I make this, I make $208,000 a year. 
<laughs> That's after expenses. <laughs> <laughs> With stand up and other shit, I made like one point two million dollars. <laughs> I failed gym. <laughs> My commute is eight feet. <laughs> I'm late every day. Dan's waiting out here looking at <laughs> flipping and some of the other guy. <laughs> Dan, Ryan, and Gino took throughout the world. <laughs> My tanning bed. <laughs> yeah, it's about two hundred eight grand, and it, you know I haven't done any advertising. <laughs> the uh, the place that we uh, that we have our tech people. Uh, what's her name? Blue what? Blue Sun. Blue Sun. Yeah. <laughs> I there a better name for that? Blows. <laughs> no, I, I love those guys, of course. But uh, no matter once every six months they. Uh, well, 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 actually, once every month, I send them a check for $5,000. <laughs> That's never late. And basically, they they, they take your credit card number. <laughs> They're like someone who works in a stop and shop. <laughs> no, but once every six months, they get a plan together. They go, listen, we're going to do this. And they, uh, write a letter and blah, 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 and target these people. Oh, great. Then I get a call back. After I say, how'd that go? We, we're down 20 people. <laughs> okay. Then I do something like say Howard uh, Howard is politically correct, and we go up four thousand people. <laughs> Keep four hundred of them, and then I make I make about two hundred eight grand. <laughs> so this is like a little business, and it's all I'm doing is sitting on my couch just talking to you. I'm, looking, I'm watching Ted Cruz act like he just won everything. He's fucking down by <laughs> down by eight thousand delegates. What is he talking about? I have to hear what he's saying. I got the black guy in the back of Ted Cruz. He's got to be security, right? I mean, there's no way he likes Ted Cruz. I mean, who's the guy on his left? I, I'm telling you right now, the big North story tonight is Chris Christie took a shit on television. <laughs> in an enormous diaper. American people Listen to him. are not misplaced. Oh, you're great. Yeah. Let us show that we will not... He looks like one of those crows, Heckle and Jekyll. <laughs> You're right. Doesn't he? Ah, yes. I could not figure out, and then you said it, and that's where it's from. Let me tell you something. Those crows. Let me tell you something right now. The funniest part of this whole campaign, as comics, we should look back on this. The funniest fucking part is when Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio start goofing on each other because the other one, they claim the other one doesn't know Spanish. <laughs> Say it in Spanish. It's Spanish. So they start talking to each other briefly in Spanish, and, t and Donald Trump is right between them. <laughs> the look on Trump's face, it, he, does, he looks like he's familiar with the situation. <laughs> Two guys are screaming in Spanish, and it looks like Donald Trump just said, okay, look, Ted, Marco, <laughs> somebody took the watch. I don't know who it was, but I had a watch here, and my wife had her scarf from Italy. Uh, you guys work it out. Uh, when you find out which one or split the blame, I just need uh, $14,000 as a reimbursement or I won't go to the police or call the immigrant police. Okay? Just work it out. And it looks like he just leans back and they argue in Spanish about who took the watch. <laughs> it looks like Trump's been in that position 15,000 times. Okay. Are you guys done yet? I thought manana meant, are you going to talk about it tomorrow? Or no? <laughs> Who's going to be the 14 grand? We, Mr. Trump, listen, my, our children, they have the influenza. <laughs> they have the lice. They come over on the border. and Of course, there's no war, but we have to we have to dig underneath. And you hire us. I love it. But we really don't know. Remember last time Melania was a little tipsy and flushed the watch? Could that have happened again? How dare you? How dare you accuse my wife of having a Chardonnay? She's downstairs on floor six getting a massage. <laughs> Mr. Trump, please. I, I, you know, I, we have no way to go if you call. So uh, you, no, I'm not getting the fourteen thousand dollars. Uh, Mr. Trump, you pay us fourteen dollars a week. I, I just, I need to get that. my my children are sick, and I just need a prescription. Uh, I, I, you know what I'm doing now? I'm dialing the immigrant police. <laughs> oh, I need uh, I need a couple of black and whites over here at. Uh, oh wait, that's the pastry shop. <laughs> I need a couple. <laughs> yeah. Get a couple of cops, or it's Donald. Yeah, same problem. Same problem. I don't care. The kids are probably downstairs playing or something. Or they're at the, they're online at the pharmacy. <laughs> Send another four over. 
Call Arizona. Send four more. <laughs> Just put them in the truck. <laughs> Tell them to shove them in the, uh, the container truck. <laughs> when I worked at the port, man, oh, God, there was such crazy shit. When I worked at the port, there was a guy, and my buddy Chick, Chick Galanti, man, I, I read about my book. He was such a fucking dork fucking hustler. He just had a hustle going on. He played speed chess with the fucking guys who inspected the orange juice. They went to Harvard. They were engineers, scientists. He, he beat them in speed chess at lunch. Each one of them owed like 800 bucks for their paycheck every week. And he would lean on them. <laughs> if the payphone rang downstairs, it might, it might have been. <laughs> it's fucking. I don't want to. I would say it could have been, <laughs> but you had to have the right answer. Uh huh. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't always Mrs. Galanti. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, chick is like so, so. This redneck trucker, this one guy, he had the big oil containers. You know the the, the, the you know the big fucking round things that you know, gasoline come in. Instead, they'd bring orange juice concentrated in a liquid form. They big take them out with hoses. And when it was empty, it was cavernous, but it was very dark inside and scary, claustrophobic. That guy would go to the uh, the Texas border by San Antonio. He would put he could fit a hundred Mexicans in there, wow. and he'd get a hundred bucks a head for him. So t- sometimes the guy would be broke, and uh, Chick knew about the scam. He <laughs> Chick called people to check out the scam. I don't know who he knew to call, mm. but apparently the guy was legit. So he would say, Chick would say, oh, "The guy needs some money sometimes because he had no union." She go fucking unionize. Look at this. This is cash. You fucking dumb redneck. You got no fucking teeth. I got more Cino, so you got teeth in your fucking head right now. You go, oh, I don't know, chick. Come on, man. I'm putting a bunch of wet backs in there next week. That's what he would say. It's like, it like a cartoon character. He goes, when are you putting these fucking guys, filthy slobs in there? You fit their kids? How much you get for a kid? $50. <laughs> so he would go down there. We'd load up. He would take one run, put like 10 grand in his pocket, come back. And chick give him a thousand bucks. The chick would make him two grand back, fifty, a hundred percent for the thousand. You keep a thousand for a week. Oh, what the fuck? That's not even a vig. It's just like a I'm robbing a guy. Wait, I don't even want to rob him. I'll rob the fucking guy. Nine straight times it worked. So chick made nine grand off the guy, and then uh, chick gave a thousand. Guy never showed back up again. The chick goes on about eight thousand. And he was right. Because you figure the guy's not going to fuck me a few times. And fucks me one time after I'm up, uh, after two times, I'm up money. And he was right. 8000 in a redneck uh, account. <laughs> I love that guy. What a great man. 55 years old, he started working. He, uh, he lived in Down Neck, Newark, Down Neck section of Newark. We talked about it as a browser all the time. We used to go eat at Zip Zips and Tony DiConnecas. Hmm. We would go to Tony DiConnecas to eat. Suba the Bash and all this shit, paella, and hmm. uh, all this shit. It was amazing. Suba the Bash was, like, beautiful. Big shrimps, mussels. Oh, yeah, just uh, just gorgeous, just mm. fresh. Uh, waiters had tuxedos on. We would walk in there after the loading trucks for four hours. We looked like fucking, you know, <laughs> gutter snipes. And they would treat us like kings because they knew we were fucking longshoremen. Hmm. Guess what? Al sent us. <laughs> in the stand. I walked down here in February 1991. I said, Al sent me. I worked for two years, didn't fill out any paperwork. <laughs> Got a paycheck. Another one of my favorite runs in movie history, Pope Greenwich Village. <laughs> the great fucking Paulie. Played by Eric Roberts. Before his bitch sister came up and became, became a bigger star than him. <laughs> You want to see your performance, man. Some of you young kids who never saw the Pope of Greenwich Village, do yourself a favor. Rent it. Mickey Rourke and Eric Roberts, man, and the Pope of Greenwich Village. Burt Young and Daryl Hannah. The young Daryl Hannah. And check it out. It is so worth it. What a great film. And uh, Eric Roberts plays a neighborhood guy. He gets some cash, goes to Shylock, some bookies, whatever, and he <laughs> spends it just some fast. He makes it, but you know, he buys too much shit. Typical get the loan on the Lower East Side. So uh, his father says, hey, you know, your, friend, your cousin the nose trades him for a new fucking uh, Delta 88 every two years. <laughs> the nose doesn't know how to spend money, Pop. The nose ain't successful. Oh, yeah, what's your, what's your idea of success? Knowing how to spend it. <laughs> I never wanted champagne wasn't caught on blue. 
I never gave a chick any dinner that wasn't at least filet mignon. <laughs> I went on a street pop, took five hundred dollars off a of Shylock to see Sinatra at the Garden. Sat two seats away from Tony Bennett. <laughs> that success. <laughs> that success. That's uh, the success, chick. At uh, fifty-five years old, he he played you know poker, pinock with these guys. Uh, five hundred rummy. He was in poker games, gambler. Ten guys a day owed him sixty bucks. He'd collect <laughs> six hundred bucks a day. Bam. He lived like a king in down that new continental every two years. <laughs> 55 years old, he couldn't stand his wife anymore. He got a job. <laughs> but he's an older guy who never wanted overtime, chick, which is great. So the young guys, we got overtime, and I didn't mind. He's, I can make some weeks, I made 3000 So our shit was in. Well, so much fucking fun. <laughs> got involved in that 500 rubby, man. <sighs> Did we ever piss in the orange juice? No. <laughs> Is the answer to that question? Guys would come by and say, you know, stuff would fall off trucks and have shirts, <laughs> pants. It was great. <laughs> no. Back in those days of wine and roses. I bought an awful, like, love shirt that I hated, but I was afraid of the guy. <laughs> I would buy the ugliest shit because I was afraid not to from the guy. <laughs> Gotta blow my nose again. Also, the great Tony Musante in Popa Grants Village as the uncle. Dan, shut up. <laughs> no wonder, I'm joking, I'm blowing my nose. No one wants to hear you. Tony Musante. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Tony Musante? He's the uncle. The uncle that worked for. Uh... Okay, well, I'm blowing yeah. my nose. <laughs> the good sound effects don't come till the third blow. I sneezed over that joke. <laughs> <laughs> the good side of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's telling a joke, Steve. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tony Musanti, uh... What's his name? Maybe the actor or something? Tony Musanti? Is he an actor? I mean, well, 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 the yeah. Well, it's great. What older actress is amazing? In it. Oh, you gotta uh, know. plays the cop's mom, right? Jack Keogh was in a bunch of the Sting is a bunch right. of great. Uh, who is the cop's mom? Doggone it! I don't remember her name. As good as a, an American actress gets, Geraldine Page. Yes, yes, you're right. Yep. F. Murray Abraham. The year after he went for Amadeus, <laughs> gave her the award. He goes, I consider these next two words the greatest two words of the English acting language. <laughs> Geraldine Pate. <laughs> he didn't work for four years. <laughs> when your mucus is magenta, what does that mean? <laughs> All right. Anyway, so I, I, I'll get to the big story. I, I did the people of Pittsburgh, you know, another adventure. Uh, this journey of comedy. You know, I have a third book deal, and it's about gambling, but and how it's related to life. And basically, you know, I walk the high wire with shit. I don't know why. I have not evolved. I don't. I don't know. If kids I'm responsible for. I don't think I'm waiting for that ten year old chubby Filipino kid from Vegas to show up with me. Papa, <laughs> mama in jail. <laughs> oh. now you in shelter. Getting fake laughing or something. Just giggling. Or you're a French Canadian kid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, is that why you weren't laughing? Because you were thinking that? <laughs> yeah. I hope the maid in France is pregnant. I mean, <laughs> in Canada. Where is she, Canada? I hope she is. Honestly, that would be very nice. She's a that woman with a dwarf. She's these big brown eyes that made. Oh, my God. Hairy knees. <laughs> well. I don't think they were her knees. I was touching <laughs> The whole waxing thing hasn't made it to Montreal. <laughs> oh. I was shoving my dick in a Sharpe. Oh. <laughs> oh, this woman saved your life. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I, she, honestly, I, she thought she did. I mean, I, I, I got laid from... 
no, with no effort. <laughs> and that is not so. That's a good story, David Beckham has. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, I must have been. I must have exuded such sadness. I I agreed to do Montreal for two weeks. My my new manager talked me into going up to the Montreal Comedy Festival for two fucking weeks. Uh, at a hotel. I don't think the air conditioning worked properly. <laughs> so uh, by accident, you'd get one of those French channels. <laughs> There's a music video they played every two seconds <laughs> on the French video. It was like a joke video, like almost like the Weird Al Yankovic, so the, but they were a team. And they were dressed as cops with big, fat, like, donuts on their face. Like, the <laughs> joke was that they eat a lot of donuts. That was the only joke. And the chorus was... Bonjour la police. That's the way I was that. Bonjour la police. <laughs> and every sh- and every fucking sketches or joke is seen as with them eating banana donuts. <laughs> Bonjour la police. <laughs> okay, that was that. That's what I said for two for two weeks. <laughs> and yeah, they're very nice to me. I hosted. You know, there's some up there called a nasty show. You know, shooting some showtime. Fucking. You know, uh, we can do the podcast up there, get a bunch of celebrities. More bullshit. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, we had a great podcast. It, well, you know, it was fun. With two, two, you know, up there, it's like a comedy convention. You know, you get to pick great comedic brains. <laughs> like, uh, you get to talk to some of the writers of Broad City. Fucking <laughs> world are we living in? Look at Chris Christie. I think he's got you are one hundred percent right. See, now I couldn't see that until just now. He's I think shitting. Yeah, and someone yelled out, "Who's shit?" And he's trying to figure out who it is. Uh, he's got job. a weird look. He's ruined the joke. <laughs> His look is like he's gonna. His look is like, oh my God, I'm fucking not president. <laughs> the guy from Celebrity Apprentice is president. I've, I've been illegally closing down bridges. His tie is crooked and he's, it goes. Do you too think long? he's gonna say be my running mate? Do <laughs> you think he's, Trump's gonna make him his running mate? There's a possibility. Rachel Maddow is looking at Brian Williams like, why do you keep putting MSNBC on? I don't like this. I like my Fox News people. You are such a fucking liberal fan. You said some insane things last week. Like, like you, you don't understand why the... <laughs> you don't understand why... You said if the guy was Muslim, the Uber driver was Muslim, he'd be on, the, on TV for two weeks. You didn't get why the Muslim people got more... Uh, Got more attention? Explain that. Explain it. What you were trying to, the point you were making. I just said that I was shocked that all the Sunday news shows, when the shooting with the Uber driver happened on Saturday, none of them brought it up. And six people people were shocked. You said to me, if that guy was Muslim, if that guy was a terror, it would be terror city for for two weeks. Yeah, well, Dan, why do you think that is? There shouldn't be, six people were shot. Dan, why is why is the terror aspect making a bigger story? Because it Dan? gets ratings. No, Dan. Yeah, I, that's what I. It's terrorism. That's it's what terrorism. I, what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's a much bigger story yeah. than a guy shooting six people. If 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 the, the six people die every day in car accidents, uh, the guy wasn't a terrorist. The other the other the other two are terrorist guys. That's why it's a bigger story. You don't you don't understand that? No, I understand it. I just uh, I think that it should be covered that no one mentioned the next day. Uh, Dan, was it was sad. on for at least three days. You saw the guy. I watched all the Sunday news. Dan, morning I see three shows. days later, that picture of the guy in the, yeah. in the, in the gun shop buying guns. Okay, yeah, they, they covered it. How how long you want them? The, it's still going on because Tim Cook's trying to fucking fight the FBI. Opening the phone, it's a bigger story. They're not going to argue about the Uber guy's phone. They don't care what's in it. The chances of me getting shot by an Uber driver rather than a terrorist are much greater. Again, I don't understand what you're talking about. If you get shot tomorrow by a terrorist or an Uber driver, what do you think is a bigger story? 
for the way that's covered by the media, the terrorist. Uh, Dan, Dan. Okay. You never sound stupid. Now you sound <laughs> stupid. Admit you're wrong. You can't do that, can you? I've never heard you sound stupid ever before. You sound dumb. I That's just, a dumb statement. We're, we're never, Why is the terrorist is a bigger story because of the media? We're not going to we're not going to stop terrorism, and the media pumps it up. We're t- it's terror, terror, terror all okay. the time. We should just so do you think they put they overblew nine yeah. eleven? Why is nine eleven on for two days? <laughs> So do you think the I didn't say the anything died? about 9-11. Well, it's it, 14 people died, Dan, in San Bernardino. I, I wasn't using that as a... Give me an example. What? Anything with terrorism is a bigger story. Because it's... Yeah, it's ter- ter- so terrorism is not a big deal? No, I but not as much as w- that Uber driver, I thought. So the Uber driver is a bigger problem than terrorism? The amount of shootings right, in the right, street? Stop, yes. Stop, stop, stop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna do you a favor. Stop talking. This is how much you don't want to admit you're wrong. That's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard a human being say. Okay, whatever. Listen to what you just said. I, then all I so said terrorism. Was, you said the terrorism. Next morning, a, nobody brought it up. Dan, which, it was on for two days. I watch it all the time. I watched the whole. I watched every Sunday morning show. And believe me, Dan, you don't watch it like I do. I sit here and watch it. It, three days later, there was that shots of him in the gunshot, uh, in the gun shop. Uh, creepy new video of the guy. How long do you want the coverage to be? And it's not as big a problem as terrorism. Is this some sort of like some sort of liberal stance against like racism against Muslims? No, no, I have no. I, hey, I have nothing. I would I would want to be safe also. But I think the chances of me getting shot by a terrorist. And or by an Uber driver, a much greater by an Uber driver. Because you're always in a Uber car. <laughs> okay. Then I pay for it. Oh, I get the sauce. I don't want you to get self conscious about the whole It's a joke. So, so uh, what, what the. I, I don't. I mean, I don't even understand the, how to respond to it. It's I just so think dumb. when we're seeing terror, terror, terror all the time. Okay. So you want them to constantly. Yeah, I don't them. worry about terror. You want them to mock. I don't worry about it. Then you're dumb. Okay, well, then I'm dumb. You worry more about Uber drivers? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> Is How many people do you think agree with that film? I, hey, I don't know how many people agree. No, so no, I can't zero. have a different opinion? Than everyone in the world? No. <laughs> I, I, I know lots of people that don't worry about terror. Like who? I, I, friends of mine, we just don't worry about it. We don't think about it. Who's We're doing the best we can. We're never going to stop it. Okay, so forget it, though. We're never going to stop it. Okay. Fine, so we're done. We should just stop even trying. I didn't say that. What are you saying, Dan? (laughs) We should have more surveillance on on Uber drivers? (laughs) Or should we? I mean, that's what you're saying. Sounds like you're saying that. I'm just saying that. Should we spend all the money we have on terror on Uber (laughs) surveillance? (laughs) You see, you realize how stupid it sounds. Yeah, okay, whatever. Please admit it. Yeah, I mean, that's just an insane liberal lake. If he was a Muslim, yeah, absolutely. Be a bigger story. Because all the terrorists are Muslim. <laughs> you have a problem with that statement? No. Good. So tell me how much money we should spend on Uber surveillance. <laughs> well, you said you're more afraid of them. You're more afraid of uh, a crazy Uber driver than so I am. So should terrorist. we send Uber to uh, to the Cuban? To uh, should we send? I think we should be checking Uber's phones. No, should, should we send the guy to uh, to the Cuban Guantanamo? Person? Yeah, <laughs> should we? After the Rolling Stones play, yeah. then he can go. As a, you see, you're such a you just can't even. You realize how dumb is what you said. <laughs> I have tape of you saying you're more afraid of Uber people than terrorists. <laughs> That's I have tape right. That. That's right. Sometimes they throw things out there. Dan, you've never. <laughs> I'd say you probably have an above average IQ. I don't. I don't it's worry the about the first ter- time you sound. I don't worry about terrorism. I don't. Okay, great, man. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> because we're not going to stop it, okay, and I'm what sure does that, that government- means you can't stop it. You don't worry about we're it. We're not going to. No. Why would I worry about it? The chances of me getting hit by a fucking car on the street are much worse. 
by somebody on their phone uh, watching, uh, driving. That's that's a bigger thing to me. Drinking fucking water with lead in it is a much bigger problem than fucking terrorism. I don't worry about it. Would you like to go down to the 9-11 memorial and tell all the people yeah, okay, cry? Yeah, okay, whatever. Whatever what? What are you talking about? Want to go to the San Bernardino family funerals and say that? I, I, they don't worry about it either, probably. What about the 30,000 other people that died last year in the United States? About from what? Guns, cars, whatever. Okay. So, uh, so what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, everybody, there, there, there's bad shit going on. Okay, what but I don't terrorism? worry about terrorism. What do you worry about? <laughs> I spend most of my time worrying about you, but other than that. <laughs> I worry about drinking water. You do? I worry what, about what, where we're spending our problem? money. What's your problem with that? <laughs> I spent a lot of time in Flint, Michigan. Yeah, exactly. Dude, give me a break. Yeah, give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. You're not worried about terrorism. But I don't think that's I just don't, I don't. I don't worry about terrorism. Like, There's nothing I can do. What, what am well, I going to do? That doesn't mean you don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. Okay. I really don't. <laughs> that's retarded. I don't worry about terrorism. <laughs> okay. Tough guy. <laughs> Come get me. Yeah, Go ahead. Why? I, I just don't worry about it. Okay, buddy. Clint Eastwood over there. When you get on a plane, you, you see somebody suspicious, it doesn't bother you at all. I don't care. Do you announce it? I don't care. We can be with Uber drivers. <laughs> Would you rather see an Uber driver or an Arab in the front? <laughs> well, most of the Uber drivers are Arabs. I've never been with one of them. Arab. Cab <laughs> drivers are. No, there are a lot of Uber drivers that are Arabs. I've never seen one. Well, if you were on a plane and uh, one one person could be sitting in front of you, an Arab or an Uber driver, <laughs> the Uber driver from Detroit, if a guy looked like that, well, who would you rather be on the plane with? I would imagine the Uber driver. Okay. <clears throat> Why? Why would you pick the Uber driver? Because he was white. But there's but nothing what, I can what, do about it. But what you just unless said, I unless I you stop. You said you'd rather. You made a choice right, there. Right. Okay. So that means you do think about it. Would you rather, be, you rather be on a plane with an Uber driver or a guy who uh, lives in Flint, Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you an Arab or uh, you know someone who uh, you know makes water in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Every case you'd pick the other guy instead of the Arab guy. Every case. Why? Because you think about terrorism. Yeah, they say you don't think about it. It's retarded. I, I, how am I gonna? What can I possibly do? Nothing. Okay, so why maybe, worry maybe about it? I got much bigger things than I left to worry about. Like what? <laughs> don't say me again. I'm no. The go-to answer, Mister Fucking. No. Mister Fucking Caregiver. Okay. <laughs> Getting the podcast out on time. Yeah, right. Well, so you that, do um, that shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Takes you four hours like in a recording session. <laughs> it's like it recorded three, uh, three. You went flipping over there, recorded. Uh, <laughs> God knows how it's going to affect my life. Still, <laughs> I'm more afraid of you guys. <laughs> I mean, you would sleep on it. Admit what you said was stop me. That's just wrong. This, for any American to go, I don't worry about terrorism right now. It's just stupid. You think it's all the media? It's all the media. Every bit of it's the media. What about Paris? San Bernardino. What about the guy in Philadelphia who shot the cop in the head yelling out uh, in, the, in the name of uh, Islam? What about that guy? My comment was all yeah, those shows right. the next day, none of them covered the shooting. And I was. Dan, they all did. That's a false statement. I watched every Sunday show. Dan. I watched CNN. I watched ABC. I watched CNN, uh, NBC. I watched CBS. Dan, None of them I talked about it. I saw it for three days. No, I was talking about the specific Sunday shows. None of them talked okay, about so it. Okay, so big deal. The Sunday shows. Would you want to listen to George Will? <laughs> it's not going to be on Face the Nation. You're not making any sense because you're trying to make a stupid point. No, I'm not making a point. You're trying to make some dumb political point about how we don't spend enough money on infrastructure. And you're going too far the other way. 
I agree with you. We don't spend enough money on bridges and shit, but you're going too far the other way. You're saying, I don't care about terrorism. That's, that's dumb. You got to care about both somehow. You it, would tell your kids not to care about terror? You wouldn't even tell them about it if you had kids? Uh, it's just not something that I would n- n- so worry tell about your kids, it? Just don't worry about it at all. That's what you tell kids. You would tell your children, don't worry about it at all. Doesn't exist. Uh, there you hear that stuff on the, okay, what, what do you, you just say don't even think about it to your children. I don't worry about it. What? There's no. There's what nothing I can kids? do. What do you tell them? Don't go to Assyria. That's what I would tell them. Okay. <laughs> don't go to San Bernardino. Yeah. Don't go to Philly. Don't go to the 400 cases we don't hear about in New York every day. 200 iPhones that they have in New York waiting to get cracked open. What do you think? That's nothing. It could be down the fucking hall. There could be somebody doing it. <laughs> yeah, laugh it up. <laughs> Gianni John was from Minnesota. <laughs> what are you laughing about? You just sound dumb. Uh, yeah, according to you, I sound dumb. No, what are you, everybody you know what? You're right. You're right. You're so right. Just go you're to, so right about it. Okay, you're right. Dan, a lot of times okay, you're right. I don't worry I'm about it. Right I don't now. worry about okay, it. Okay, good. That's good to know, actually. I got much bigger things to worry about. Like what? I, I have to worry about my family. I have to worry about my parents. You don't have a family. <laughs> Neither wow. do I. Neither do I. I don't have a family either. It's me and you, buddy. <laughs> Your parents, are, they're older, very successful people. They've had a wonderful life. They hate me. Oh, dude, I just went home over the weekend. You got about two and a half million. Money. Yo, get out of here. What are you talking about? You're making an insane amount of money. Yeah, sure. Whatever. If I could just find out at half the places where my dad had money from the laundromat, I'd believe be. you'll get it. Yeah. He doesn't remember. <sighs> Neither did Vinny the Chin <laughs> Giganti. He doesn't remember. He doesn't want you getting at it now. All these times they might still leave yeah. him. You might want to put something in on the Cowboys. <laughs> when he's dead, you'll have it. Goes to blood. You're a guinea. Like me. You just don't want to admit you're a rich guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Through no work of your own. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The only thing my parents ever gave me, my mom won a Pontiac Ventura okay. at Jewel. Oh, we got it. You were very poor. <laughs> very poor. You had the least expensive leader hose. <laughs> Again, I don't like these political arguments, but you usually make a very good point with it. It's, it. This is like you really sound like you're trying to you're trying to sound stupid to make a point is what you're trying to do. I do it all the time. The media p- pumps up ISIS. It's not doesn't exist. <laughs> You know how disrespectful that is to the victims of those families? That's so disrespectful. Man, it really is. It kind of offends me. Uh, to everyone who listens to 9 11, all those first responders, I know guys. You don't worry about terrorism. Thanks. That's, that's a salute to them, Bob. We're doing the best that we can. Whatever, I don't worry about it. Okay. Well, you hear that, guys? Dan doesn't care. Every time you cough up some blood from responding to the thing that doesn't exist, that has nothing to do with it. What else? Well, you, that's what you're saying. No, it's not what I'm saying. Say, uh, right now, there's 4,000 FBI agents working on an iPhone yeah. because it doesn't exist. So Did I say that he should not give up the code for the iPhone? No. Uh, you, well, you, I, I thought you don't think about it. I don't think about it. Well, then why do you have an opinion on it? Okay, we can't have opinions. Sorry. Well, if, uh, not about something you don't think about. <laughs> you're insanely wrong. Okay. You're right. I'm wrong. Well, you're never wrong, according to you, <laughs> ever, about anything. I mean, you could be insanely wrong about something and you blame it on somebody else. Well, it's something happened. Eh? What do you say to the San Bernardino families who are crying right now that it doesn't exist? What about the wife, the wife of the cop of that guy shot? What do we, What do you say to the families from the Uber driver? I say the same thing I would say to the other people. I'm sorry for yeah, a different that's I, reason. That's what I want to say. You're comparing the Uber driver to the terrorist. You're crazy. Okay. <laughs> You're right. a nutcase. How many Uber drivers uh, incidents are there, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> One guy shot six people. <laughs> Most Uber drivers get attacked by crazy people in the backseat. Every other Uber story uh, with violence is the guy getting attacked. <laughs> That crazy Taco Bell guy, right? <laughs> That's right. That broad was a doctor in Miami. Did you see that fucking? Was that the one who was punching him in the face oh or something? Oh, my God. <laughs> she wasn't the driver. 
You ever see a terrorist getting beat up by a woman doctor in Miami? <laughs> Family. I'm your family. <laughs> Sad, I know. <laughs> Take a break. We're ready. Uh, I'm getting to love. My mother is obsessed. My mother and sister are obsessed with that OJ uh, TV movie with Cuba Gooding as OJ. I recorded them all. I, I haven't watched any of them yet. It didn't look good to me. Like TV movies, they love it though. Like, do you have do you have a doubt that he didn't decapitate those two people? Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Let me see this. Are you watching OJ? If so, who's the guy who played the big boss? In Mad Men, supposed to be in this? Do you know? <laughs> he was just in the scene at the long table where a lot of people were having dinner. That's the thing. <laughs> get right on that. If I get back during two minutes, I get it. Are you okay? I your blood sugar. <laughs> I get this on stage. I get stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I, do, I guess I'll get into it. What, what, what new are they going to say? You know what I mean? What new are they going to say? I uh, I can walk around here like a lounge act. I love this. <laughs> I'm looking for a fucking lighter, man. Where's a lighter? I gotta, I gotta have a cigarette. The doctor said I gotta have a cigarette. Oh yeah, yeah. The doctor said I have a cigarette every hour. It's gotta be on your table there because you you were uh, lighting where, up before. Where? where? It's gotta be somewhere on your table. My table. The oh no! Oh, so it's my table. <laughs> With all the forks. Uh, while well, I, I got matches, while well, you light this cigarette, try to think of Can you think of anything entertaining to say? <laughs> he throws away the forks, ladies and gentlemen. There, there are no forks in this house. And I sp every week I go Saturday to Manhattan and buy forks. I don't know why. I don't know what the reasoning. He hates forks. Spoons and knives, we got them all. Forks, he throws out. Okay. We're going to re-up the argument of why Bob Levy's manlier than you. <laughs> <laughs> he eats, he slowly made the forks. I go to Manhattan every week and get more forks. <laughs> it's not like Alice Crabbed. <laughs> you. <laughs> well, thank you, though. I appreciate it. Oh, here's a letter right here. It was underneath my, <laughs> was underneath my jokes. <laughs> no, not jokes. I wrote down. I prepared something. I prepared, I prepared a list. So Rubio broke his losing streak. He won Minnesota. Oh, we did? Yep. So Trump won what? Trump won six, and there's still one, I think, uh, that they don't know yet. But, you, know, you know the creepiest thing on TV, this midget show? I can't, yeah, I can't watch that. The Little Couple? Ugh. Yeah, I can't watch that crap. <laughs> Jeez, okay. <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> why is it quitting crap? Like, why? Are you, are you, is it disconcerting? The I, I just can't watch midgets. I don't know. There's yeah, something about it. Very that. liberal. <laughs> But you're offended by the Muslim uh, <laughs> oh, there coverage. No, no, you don't. You don't like midgets. I, I just don't. Well, I've known several. I've worked with them. They're, <laughs> actually, they're funny, they're nice people. But I'm just saying, I feel terrible for them. I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, they seem to be happy. These people, but most midgets you meet are alcoholics. They're they're very they're very bad drinkers. <laughs> Imagine realizing you're a midget. Oh, oh my god. I mean, looking like me, I was upset. <laughs> Can midgets reach their ass? Like, I mean, like, is that, I'm, not, I'm not even trying to be funny. Well, that's, <laughs> a, that's another show. Uh, can midgets reach their ass? We'll title it that. It'll be very provocative. <laughs> I just hope they're happy because the little couple seems happy. But, you know, how about the little homeless couple? Do they have normal sized children or midget children? No, they could have normal sized kids. No, I'm on, on these people, on this show. <laughs> Fucking Pittsburgh. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch it that much. 
the kids seem taller than them, but they have several garbage cans that are taller than them. <laughs> I spend all my time watching The Affair so I can talk with your mother and sister about it. <laughs> that is so fun. <laughs> Yeah, you DVR that show, The Affair. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're talking to my mother and sister about it. <laughs> That's right, I do. I, I'm obsessed with this chick that reminds me. I'm obsessed. This chick on Fox News, Dana Farino. What's her name? Dana Perino. Oh, my God. You know, they just have these perfect-looking broads. I mean, Megyn Kelly, if you take a picture, is perfect-looking. I mean, but this Dana Perino, man, there is something about her that just... <laughs> Her inner Kraken needs to be released. <laughs> She's so serious. I mean, she doesn't even laugh at Greg Gutfeld. <laughs> what the fuck? Why isn't he on the little couple? <laughs> political, politically humor puppy. <laughs> the political pupper. The, the political little people. <laughs> the funny little people. <laughs> Did Fox put out a news wanted least funny human on the planet? <laughs> the dead silence. He just blurts out inappropriate shit to these other people, like these broads on Fox. who don't even get what he's saying. I think you're yeah. But uh, that, of course, is all balanced out by the hilarious comedy of Water's World. <laughs> I mean, these are people you just want to punch in the face. <laughs> Did you want to punch Albert Brooks in the face? Richard Pryor, no. <laughs> Different reaction. <laughs> Never. So Dana Perino. Perino? Perino. Perino. Okay. Perino. Former Bush spokeswoman. Is she really? Yeah, when she when he was the president. For Bush, yeah. I bet she's shaving now. Oh. <laughs> I bet she fucking shaves that fucking thing dry. That is a fucking... Political runway. <laughs> so she must like Jeb then, right? You know, I don't watch Fox enough to know what she didn't give like. Jeb. Uh, <laughs> she didn't give Jeb a lot of credit. She always they all gave Jeb shit for being stupid. <laughs> and I guess she sold out the family. That Oliver Stone movie, W, it, it, Oliver Stone, I mean, he makes them look so terrible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, if you really watch it, he really makes them look retarded. Mm -hmm. Well, Poppy, <laughs> Josh Rowland plays him like a retard. <laughs> oh, Poppy, damn it, I like baseball. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't play. All right, I'll buy a team. <laughs> oh, I think, I, and then James Cromwell, James Cromwell, Jimmy Cromwell, by the way. A guy I uh, a guy I worked with. He's in the movie The Bachelor. Another Academy Award winner. But, uh, oh, the fun I had making The Bachelor. I was 30 years old. The fall, I was 30 years old. Uh, all of November, I lived in a suite at the Park High in downtown San Francisco. I did stand up every once in a while, and I made a movie. $75 million movie. I got 100 grand and per diem every day. And... Uh, Ed Asner and Hal Holbrook were, were the two guys I was in every scene with because we were trying to chase Chris O'Donnell and Renee Zellweger. <laughs> you know, that's when I thought I, I was delusional because I, I had a massive drug problem. But I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I told uh, Chris O'Donnell at lunch one day that I thought Renee Zellweger liked me. I was going to ask her out. And Chris, we were about halfway through the movie. And Chris, downtown San Francisco in the background, Chris looked at me and said, if you do that art, we'll throw you off a bridge. <laughs> Because they were afraid I'd freak her out, you know, and she'd quit the movie because <laughs> I was like a stalker. And they couldn't fire me because I already was on camera for two weeks. It would have been a massive dilemma. <laughs> but I don't know. She, you know, Renee would come in. We'd have lunch together. And her little, she have her dog or Labrador retriever that she liked. And I'd pretend to like it. i go, wow, it's great. I love having your dog's hair in my fucking sandwich. <laughs> that I just got from, your sandwich I just got from North Beach, that fucking beautiful Italian deli. Me and Ed Asner would go all the time. That's right. Me and Ed Asner just shit next to each other in the Port of Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Big Lou Grant shit. I said to him while we were shitting, I said, where'd you, uh, where'd you shoot Mary Tyler Moore show? <laughs> Greatest lot on the fucking planet. CBS Radford. <laughs> James Cromwell, uh, you know, is the guy who plays uh, the, the farmer and babe, the big thing, and uh, he, uh, he also was uh, in... Uh, 
L.A. store. I mean, uh, L.A. Confidential. Amazing actor. Mm-hmm. Played Stretch Cunningham on the All in the Family in the seventies. Very liberal. You used to run with the Black Panthers in the sixties. That kind of liberal. Ultra liberal. Hmm. Vegan. Ran marathons. He was a vegan. And I quite frankly, I said to him when I got to know him, I said, James, you, you look like you need a roast beef sandwich. <laughs> a little peakish. But the nicest guy. And I was in a lot of scenes with it was a lot of scenes with just me, him, and uh, Chris. And you pick a guy's brain. So one scene was me and Brooke Shields. <laughs> we're, we're all having dinner at an Italian restaurant. I brought my buddy Deej because I got him a part in the movie. Well, he auditioned and was a great actor and he got his own part. But he was shooting uh, his part. And uh, he came. We played, uh, we played charades in an Italian restaurant in San Francisco with Brooke Shields. <laughs> uh, movie titles. And, you know, like I was smoking the bandit. Somebody was Jaws. and <laughs> Brooke Shields uh, did a French movie. <laughs> and I, I was, I was yeah. the only one who had the guts. I gave her shit. I'm like, bro, come on. <laughs> where, where, you know, where, where do you think you are? The premier of La Strada? <laughs> so uh, we had the same agent. I like Brooke Shields. Met her a couple times after that. Maybe I could have fucked her. I don't know. <laughs> she was just going through the divorce with Agassi. And, uh, she actually married an amazing guy. This guy, Chris Henshaw, is an amazing writer. The other guys, a bunch of stuff that he's written. Adam McKay's partner. Uh, a really good guy. But uh, and Brooke was a sweetheart. Honestly, the, the bigger the stars sometimes, the nicer they are. And she was an example of that. What a sweetheart. And she actually, she's very funny in that movie. She does a good job. She had to play she had one night of shooting a cameo. And she has to look pissed off and smoke cigarettes. Who the fuck is calling <laughs> me? God damn it. Oh, I can't do this. I can't. <laughs> And then all my Brooke Shields story. <laughs> anyway, Brooke left, and we were two ships who passed in the night. She went on to the writer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so so anyway, James Cromwell comes. I might have told this on Stern on Sirius. It says, it says that has her. And I said, so what have you been doing, Jimmy? And Cromwell goes, I just did a play with Blythe Danner. <laughs> and uh, wonderful. I think uh, the actress goes, I love her. Class act. And her daughter stopped by. She just won the Oscar. She's a fucking gun. <laughs> and Asher screamed at the top of his lungs. <laughs> where, where did I leave off? Uh, Blythe Danner. Her daughter stopped by. Did she get cunt? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wait a minute. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Send this over to the museum broadcasting. <laughs> so, uh, these cancer kids aren't TLC enough, all right? I'd rather watch the midgets. <laughs> cancer kids are midgets. It's just, I can't sleep. Believe me, I gave a lot of money to the cancer. I just saved the kid's life for Christ's sake. 80 grand, I gave him. Kids got money left over. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, man. It screams out in uh, the whole crew. And James Cromwell's trying to be nice. Ah, she was very sweet. He, he said, Gwyneth Potter's a fucking cunt. I love her, mother. Love her to death. I did a play with her, too, motherfucker. What do you think? You're the first fucking person to do a fucking play with Black fucking Danner? I did a play with her. She stopped by. She's about 16 years old. Ordering her mother around. Cunt. Rich cunt. All right, let's move on. That was the whole conversation. <laughs> God, I love that, Asner. Then we both played Santa Claus and Elf. This one about the premiere. I said, I remember that time you called her. Who are you? <laughs> I was in The Bachelor. What? what I've done plenty of movies, pal. Move over. <laughs> Thanks. Ed. Good to see you. How's Hal doing? <laughs> okay, so me and Asner Hal, we go to North Beach sometimes. If we were near there for lunch, we'd sit. They'd tell me stories about Hollywood. It was just, I mean, what a great time. A chick who was one of the brides and who stood in for Renee one day. She had a nice body. Hmm. Uh, fucking gave me the best blowjob ever in oh. my trailer. Oh, God. It was raining in San Francisco. And I ran in there and she goes, uh, you know, because I said, hey, come on in. You know, because uh, she was like an extra and they they have a tent and shit. Like fucking refugees. <laughs> they get treated like shit. So that's where a gutter snipe like myself was. I can't get Renee, but I can get her fucking. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And it's and it's better pussy, by the way. Her mouth was better than Renee's pussy. 
Renee was about to get fat too with Bridget Jones diary. Mm. I wouldn't have tolerated that. <laughs> Out, honey. <laughs> Out. You put a pillow under your fucking shirt like Johnny Depp and blow. Come home, take that pillow out, and you got that bod. The body Renee Zellweger had when we were making that movie, The Bachelor, I'd be standing next to her. She was tight. It was in her fucking contract. She had to go to the gym for an hour and a half every day. She was about to do that Nurse Betty. Had to be in shape for that. She said to me, I'm about to do Nurse Betty. You're a comedian. You know Chris Rock? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she goes, I'm about to work with him. I'm like, yeah, just watch your wallet. <laughs> she goes, is that a racial <laughs> joke? I go, uh, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Like my wallet, and he's black. Uh, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> One of the key grips, told me. I, I honestly told him. I said, "What I still believe." I said, "He's because bring the pain had just come out." I said, "He's uh, right now. He's doing the best work on the planet Earth. He's doing the best work a comedian's done in, in twenty years." And that was the truth. And I will say this again. I tweeted it. Chris Rock, best Oscar, uh, best Oscar uh, monologue ever, in my opinion. Best opening monologue ever because he, he found the perfect angle. In comedy, you got to find an angle for something that's that sensitive. And he found the angle, yeah. that angle of, you know, uh, we had more important shit to protest when in the 60s. Mother swinging from a tree. I don't care about who won best cinematography, foreign film short, you know. You could have you went on for days with that bit. And uh, my buddy Frank Sebastiano helped write the whole show. And Frank, congrats to you guys. These idiots in the media, some are spinning it like he didn't do well. He killed with awkward shit. You know, Rock's one of those guys, like, he takes the stage. He's one of those comics he moves around a lot. It's uh, uh, classic, original delivery and amazing, uh, important, funny shit like he always has. And, uh, you know, Frank Sebastiano, who I, who wrote, uh, co-wrote Dirty Work and co-wrote Beer League with me, directed Beer League, an amazing talent from Nutley, New Jersey. He's been uh, working with Chris as a writer for a long, long time as an Emmy from the Chris Rock Show, and Chris picked him for the second time in a row to write for the Oscars. And uh, all the other guys who work with him there are amazing. Uh, my buddy Rich Voss. Of course, Nick worked on one of them. It's just uh, He knows funny. Ali Leroy and you know some other guys from his show. But uh, you know, I, th I thought he did an amazing job. And he, he went right at it. And he gave Will Smith shit. It's so great. <laughs> I mean, Will Smith has got to be an arrogant fuck. He didn't, uh, I mean, you know, to, to call him out on Wild Wild West and Jada Pinkett, you weren't invited. <laughs> Nobody cared. I mean, that's fucking great. I mean, look, it, the end bit, I know what he's referring to. I mean, a couple of years back, uh, during I think the 2012 campaign, George Clooney threw that really high-powered Hollywood liberal party as a fundraiser for Barack Obama and, like, Clooney's Beverly Hills or Malibu backyard. And uh, Rock didn't give those kind of details, but I'm sure that's what he was talking about. And he went to the, the party, and he's talking about taking a picture of Barack Obama and saying, see, all these, these are the nice white people, and they don't hire us. <laughs> They're liberals. Okay, good joke, kind of funny, but, uh, you know, I can see. <laughs> I'm not critiquing the monologue, but as a white guy, I can see where some, you know, Dana Perino types. <laughs> Uh, I'm get mad at that. I'm like, Chris, I mean, I get in 1964, that's a point, but they don't hire you guys. Mm. <laughs> what? what? About, you're feeling the black honeymooners? <laughs> black about last night? <laughs> Kevin Hart's in more movies than Tom Cruise. I mean, <laughs> you're hired. Muslims, they have a problem. Uh, and Uber drivers. <laughs> <laughs> So that fact at the end, I could see it pissed off some white people. And of course, the liberals are afraid to get mad in the audience. <laughs> and and people talk about it. Why do you have to talk? Yeah, some people are talking about it. Why do you have to talk about it for the whole time? Because it's the most interesting thing out there. I could have listened to him fucking do that for three hours, making people squirm. Of course, it's great making people squirm. Rock is the best at it. <laughs> That's why he's so great at the video music awards where there's less prestige, all that bullshit around it, that phony, pretentious bullshit. <laughs> And he could just roast, you know, in sync all night. It was fucking great. Call Freddie Prince Jr. a bore and then to introduce him. <laughs> you know. Uh, funny motherfucker, Chris. You know, and, and uh, brilliant. As, as good as a comic's ever been. And uh, a good guy in person. Kind of know him. But I, I, I was really impressed by that. 
I think it covered all it needed to and had a great angle and, and both sides of it. So uh, kudos to Rock. I don't watch the rest of the show. I, I, I've, I've got less and less interest in, in the Oscars. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, after watching a, an entertainer like Chris Rock and be funny like that, and, you know, it's a hard thing for a comic to do because last time Chris did it, I thought he was funny too, but a lot of people were very uptight with it. And I'm glad they had him back. Of course, the Letterman thing. Letterman did an amazing joke, but that Jack Nicholson impression, they got mad at it. Jack Nicholson, of all people, the guy from Cuckoo's Nest, <laughs> was offended by that joke. Give me a break. Letterman did a good job. But uh, the rest of the show, I know they did more jokes and stuff. I didn't get to see a lot of that <laughs> show. Did you watch any of it? Yes, I think Chris was great. I'm talking about the rest of the show. Like uh, uh, I watched m- three quarters of it. By and the way, sneeze right into the mic. <laughs> I turned away. I'm saying you should sneeze no. into it. I watch it. Oh, okay. Just make sure I don't use that pen. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, if anyone knows the exact time and place, Dana Perina goes to the gym. <laughs> She's fine. Dude, she'd be married to a jerk off Dan Googler. <laughs> She's married to some weird looking guy. And uh, he's a. What is he? What is he? What? A London guy? He's an yeah, English, English man. 60, 60 years old. She's 42. Yeah. Weird. Weird. 48, honey. When, <laughs> he, I was, when you were 10, I was 16. He reads b- books to dogs. Yeah, he reads the books. <laughs> I wonder if he does in the Dan Filato dog voice. <laughs> like you do talk to my sister's dog. <laughs> Tale of Two Cities. It was the better times. It was the better times. Why did it the better times? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> they have uh, your sister's got a, a rental dog for about a month. I went over there today because so she... four dogs are shitting over there. <laughs> you go over there. <laughs> Who the four dog? Who the four did a doggy? This one's the Great Gatsby. This is Dana Prina's husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's talking about Hillary Clinton's emails. <laughs> Bring it home the bacon. He's at home talking to their Sharpe poodle. He's talking to their Brussels griffin. Uh, griffin. He's talking to their five Brussels griffons going, uh, when I was a young boy, my father gave me advice that I used forever. He said, treat me like a do 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 I'm the great guy. He lived on Long Island. <laughs> does an idiot like that, does someone, someone who's that much of a dog person, does he think the dog understands the difference in books? Does he think the dog knows the difference between <laughs> the sun also rises or a movable feast by Hemingway and, and this noise? <laughs> Morons! Oh, I'd love the fucking fucker. <laughs> Oh, he's reading to the dog. I'll be upstairs reading to her dog. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I'll give you a quick quiz, Dan. Okay, you're 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 you, and you're gonna you're applying for a job at any airline in the world, and I'm interviewing you. Okay, you ready? Okay. First question: date of birth. Where are you from? Blah blah blah. Okay, great, great, great. Are you afraid to give me date of birth? Ten three sixty two. Okay. Really? Okay. You're fifty three. Fifty four. Wow. Get up there. I look like your great uncle, forty-eight. Uh, okay, do you get, what do you consider a bigger threat to the country, an Uber driver or uh, a terrorist? If I'm working for an airline, no. Well, what is your answer? Uh, a okay, terrorist. Bye. <laughs> uh, you're thinking about yeah, it. Bye. Yeah. If you th- uh, yeah, that was actually a joke question. Bye. <laughs> You starting to see my point at all, or huh? You see my <laughs> point at all? Are you seeing my point at all? No, because <laughs> there, there isn't one. <laughs> He's not afraid of terror, right? Smart statement. I have you on tape saying you're more afraid of Uber drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you order one every day? I do not order one every day. You use them quite a bit. I do not. I only use them. When- when my, uh, my Amex bill looks like a fucking Nazi document. Yeah. That's not from me. I'm kidding. <laughs> Who's it from? I don't know. You tell you tell Mike Boschetti, he can, oh, we'll Uber you home. Well, yeah, because he's Boschetti and he clearly <laughs> appreciates my friendship. <laughs> By the way, you asked if he could be on the show the other night. What was that about? Huh? You said to me, someone wants to meet Mike Boschetti. Can he come on the show? What's that about? 
What, do you forget what happened? You said somebody wants right. Mike Pichetti to be here. I don't, I, don't, I, don't remember, I don't know what you're talking about. Dad, you said a guest wants to meet Mike oh, Pichetti. You know what? I totally forgot. I, yeah. to, I totally forgot. Mike Pichetti is not our friend anymore. I, I, you know what? I totally forgot. And I might sign a very big deal with a company, and I was going <laughs> to have a show with a big budget. And I was thinking about hiring Mike again, for the rec, like I did with DirecTV. Maybe this could have been even more money. It would have been definitely more money. But uh, apparently Mike doesn't like me, so I will not be thinking of him. But I can guarantee I won't be thinking of him now. Sorry, Mike. I'm sure some of your other buddies in showbiz will give you a job. Maybe the UCB people. Will give you. <laughs> Anything for 1800 bucks a week, Mike, that I was going to give you? Or the 1500 I gave you DirecTV? Did I put you in a not safe place, Mike? <laughs> Why don't you Google pray for Artie a couple more times, lughead? Fucking dope. Still don't want to say you were wrong about that. <laughs> you got to let Twitter say it? Okay. I was wrong about the terrorism. Uh, okay, fine. Thank you. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of politicians have said that. Uh... <laughs> Should say the fucking W's fucking tombstone. <laughs> Come on, Pappy. Come on, Pappy. <laughs> w in the wave. You got to watch that. Oliver Stone, it's some great, some of his best work is it's subtle. When you first watch it, you go, I don't know, I think I kind of like him. Maybe. He was, and then you watch it again, you go, oh, my God, he's making him <laughs> retarded. It's, always, it's as if he's a mongoloid. <laughs> and Richard Dreyfus, i tell you what. Does an amazing job as Dick Cheney in that movie. Uh, it's so subtle. Yeah, Dreyfus is a great actor. I saw Dreyfus in his stupid rich snot kid political fucking ass wipe kid on the fucking phone. <laughs> yeah, we watched it. Did you watch that, Mike? Like, yeah, I watched it with you. Like, why is his opinion mean yeah. anything? <laughs> I'm the son of the guy who played Hooper in Jaws, so we got my political. Like, why? You know, come on. But Richard Dreyfus looks batshit crazy, doesn't he? Another one with eyes. Like, I thought I liked that guy. <laughs> Hooper. Hooper drives the boat, Chief. <laughs> hey, Chief, see you about your rubbers. <laughs> nobody's good. Nobody's good like that anymore. Mm. Oh, well, let's see which uh, episode it is of Two Broke Girls. <laughs> the breakup scene. Okay, let's run the scene. <laughs> Two Broke Girls. <laughs> <laughs> this is the all created by Michael Patrick King and Whitney Cummings. Here we go, it's too broke. That's something new I want you to try. That's the exact same sentence that got me hooked on cocaine in the 80s. <laughs> My new cupcake flavor. Delicious dark chocolate the ladies can't help but love. I'm calling it the Earl. I know you got that right. <laughs> I guess his name is Earl. I was running late, so Garrett I decided to hail a cab, and then I remembered I didn't have any money on me. And then I remembered I didn't have any money at all, so I walked the whole way here. The apartment's three blocks away. Yes, I know. Three blocks and 15 Ola Chicas away. Well, you can't be late again. I'm already worried about me being late. Every month. <laughs> On my way here, a homeless man asked me for money. All right, I'm going to stop that right now. Thank you. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to try to fit my head in the blender. <laughs> this show is responsible for these two <laughs> having money. Whitney Cummings having an HBO special. How many Corvettes could Whitney Cummings buy right now? <laughs> because of what you just heard. Well, she's an executive consultant. You listen to the laughter, the canned laughter after those jokes. I've been on these sitcoms. Me and Norma get the script for the Norm show every week and go, we, we, they, they think a group of people are going to collectively laugh at the stuff. And then they laughed every time. They're the same people laughing behind Rubio. When he does the small hands <laughs> joke, and you realize everyone west of Pittsburgh is retarded, <laughs> unless you listen to this podcast. Dan, once again, we're on tape saying you're wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, last bit of the night here. I was told not to talk for longer than five minutes. <laughs> My job, really. Not by me. No, I know. What are you talking okay. about? What, what is that about? <laughs> God, you're so, everything's about not about you, Dan. 
Who think people thought I? You told me that. People will tell, say on Twitter that I told you. Why do you care? About I'm two kidding. People? I was you're, kidding. Not, you're not kidding. I know. I was. That's kidding. another movie. You have. You say yeah. something. You're clearly serious. About I it. Was I'm kidding. kidding. I'm a fag. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Such an ass. To stand for something. Can you hold your ground? I agreed with you about the terrorist thing, and I got it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. I'll end with this. Big story. The Rolling Stones who are pushing their 80s. I mean, at this point, I'm a Stones fan, but guys, just go home, guys. Mick, take the fucking snakeskin suit off, dude. I, how many times are you going to play Brown Sugar? How many times can Charlie Watts lead you to tumbling dice? How many times? Bill Wyman got off the gravy train with 80 million bucks 40 years ago. He's the happiest guy out there. <laughs> I mean, Keith Richard, what are they doing? <laughs> go relax. I guess they love it. Jagger, I mean, just obviously just the biggest ego maniac on the planet. You know who the biggest winner is that black bass player, Daryl Jones, you can never talk about. They never <laughs> call him a Rolling Stone. He's been in the band for 30 years. <laughs> He's been in the band longer than Journey was in existence times two. <laughs> Daryl Jones the, the, took over for Wyman. <laughs> I guess he's an amazing musician. You get that gig. Every time he's on the road, I guess he, he's proud of fucking love a bunch of money. Again, all right, get the bass out. <laughs> It's not a jazz solo album. One of those things. Two people buy it. <laughs> More people buy Bernie Williams jazz album. I'll tell you, look, it looks funny. The shorter a cook guy, he looks very funny on this. I'm sure he was, does a set at Largo once a week. <laughs> uh, you talk to the executive producer. Found that kid at Largo. So funny. I mean, you're going to hear a lot of noise from him. Yeah, Julio. <laughs> I can't complain about that town. I used to learn my lines to the Norm Show at the light at Moore Park and Sunset <laughs> in my convertible Mercedes after I had breakfast at the Beverly Hills Hotel where they knew my name. Every fucking valet got a $20 bill. Everybody got a double saw buck. Everybody. They would help me move a dead body, those Mexicans. <laughs> they would have given me the vest off their back if I asked. Double saw buck. Everyone on my tip more than Alan Alda. That's what the guy said. You tip more than Alan Alda. I said, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Not more than 10 night. Look at the wax build up on these shoes. So Mick Jagger. 35 grand a week for learning my lines at Sunset Morgan. <laughs> Maya Bialik, I'm a big fan of her. She's the sexy one on. <laughs> it's over. All right. I'm going to read a list. The Rolling Stone story made me think of something. I'm going to read a list of names. And you'll see an obvious uh, reason. They all have something in common, but I'll give you something a little more than the obvious. Here's the list. In no particular order. Brian Jones, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Keith Moon, Jim Morrison, Mama Cass, Papa John Phillips, Easy e <laughs> Davy Jones from the Monkees, John Entwistle, <laughs> David Bowie, Glenn Fry, Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse, Old Dirty Bastard, <laughs> Jam Master J, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Johnny Cash, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson. All of the original Ramones. <laughs> Every original Ramone. Marky, not an original. Tommy Ramone, original drummer, dead. Who, by the way, looked like the coffee cake when he died. <laughs> Frank Zappa, Scott Weiland, Clarence Clemens, Danny Federici, Freddie Mercury. All those guys are rock stars that have died. But all of them are people who Keith Richards outlived. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Richards, it's 2006 fucking teen. Man. And Keith Richards is about to play Havana, Cuba. <laughs> He's going to add one more city. We're in a hotel room. He gets a blowjob from a maid doing coke off his dick while he's shooting morphine. <laughs> Every one of those people died before him. <laughs> In 1975, who's going to die first? Davy Jones or Keith Richards? What's your answer? <laughs> in 1984, who's going to die first? Easy E or Keith Richards? <laughs> <laughs> Easy E, of course, made the mistake of fucking it. Rock Hudson's ex wife. I'll give you a couple of quick. 1988, question Who dies first? Whitney Houston or Keith Richards? <laughs> Definitely Keith Richards. 
And here's a visionary. Unless Whitney Houston marries Bobby Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Then her and her daughter will both die before. <laughs> <laughs> Poor girls. Bobby Brown. Bobby, what an infection Bobby Brown has. Terrible infection. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. Awful. In 1982, he's going to die first. Keith Richards or Michael Jackson? <laughs> Of course, Keith Richards, unless Michael Jackson's hair got set on fire during a Pepsi shoot. <laughs> and he takes a painkiller. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen seventy eight is dying first. Keith Richards or Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Keith Richards. Unless Freddie Mercury goes to a party on Fire Island in the summer of nineteen eighty one. Beats a guy who's Italian, patient zero. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye show business. <laughs> patient zero. Meet Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Freddie Mercury was a goddamn genius. What a front man Freddie Mercury was. Nobody better. Watch some of those old Queen videos, man. Those songs. Is, uh, again, they, they, God's got to take the fucking really good ones. Take somebody else. Fucking Jesus Christ. Take Calvin Klein, not Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Or take me, how about that? No. What's that? <laughs> I told Danny's in my will, and I gotta check the fork. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Wait a minute. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I think that's Mozzarella. <laughs> Do I have any other jokes? I guess not. <laughs> so awful offensive jokes. <laughs> okay, uh, 1992, who dies first, Old Dirty Bastard or Keith Richards? <laughs> Keith Richards, unless, of course, Old Dirty Bastard makes an illegal left in Brooklyn. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Good stuff, man. I like a lot of this shit. I'm happy with some of those offensive jokes. We'll keep them for the monologue. <laughs> Try to get me go to rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to die first? Five years ago, Amy Winehouse or Keith Richards? <laughs> You'd say Keith Richards unless, uh, unless, of course, the answer to rehab is no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get to go to rehab. No, no, no. <laughs> to change that to yes, 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 you got a shot. Who's going to die first? 1962, Brian Jones or Keith Richards? Keith Richards. Unless Anita Pallenberg's magic pussy leaves him. <laughs> for Keith Richards. <laughs> That's what they say she had, a magic pussy. Her and Ava Gardner. They say that about uh, Kate Hudson has a magic pussy that made uh, Owen Wilson try to kill himself. Do you ever have pussy so good you think it would kill people? Like if people would die, die over it. I have. Sure, yes. <laughs> I guess I should say yes. <laughs> you have? You had pussy that good? Yes. White pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever fuck a black chick? Half. Uh, mulatto. Oh, wow. Well, that's winning the mulatto. <laughs> you won the mulatto, baby. Where'd you meet her? She was a mocheteer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop the mic on that.